Grazie. Thank you very much, everyone. Guys, if the uh, I apologize if the clock in here is two and a half minutes fast, faster than uh, the one outside. So I'm going to call the meeting to order and welcome everyone here tonight. And the there's an amended agenda. And the first item of business falls under council minutes of September 12th. Second. So that was moved by Councillor Braithwaite, seconded by Councillor Ney, Councillor Braithwaite. Um, yes, just uh, wanted to point out that um, under the presentation on page one, you had uh, mentioned that you would like to see um, for Councillor Alan Cassidy, who sadly passed away in July of this year, that we rename the um, award program, the Alan Cassidy Recognition and Renovation of Building Achievement Awards Program, and I think that's a great idea, and I'm going to be bringing that up and putting it in your business. Thanks very much, Dave. Anything else? Uh, can I just ask staff to comment? Uh, you may recall about uh, almost a month ago, we had BC Hydro here, and they had, they had promised that they would have a uh, an open house forum somewhere in the neighborhood. Um, have you heard anything since? Um, no, I haven't. And I, was it a solid promise? Or just it was a, it was pretty good guarantee. Okay. Well, no, we haven't heard anything. Okay, could you, uh, could I ask if you could follow up? Thanks. And um, one other item there is the, um, the, uh, the whole question around urban deer. And I know there was a workshop at the UBCM, and maybe on the new business later on tonight we can discuss that. Okay. Okay. Call the question. Those in favour? Country. Motion carries. Uh, next item is committee of the whole. Move approval. Second. Sure. Any discussion? Seeing none. Those in favour? Country. Motion carries. Special counsel. September twenty third. Move Moved by Councillor Braithwaite, seconded by Councillor Tenson. Discussion? Seeing none. Those in favour? Country. Motion carries finally. Committee of the Whole Minutes, October 3rd. Second. <laughs> you thought I would forget. <laughs> no, no. So, in the minutes of October in the minutes of October 3rd, there is, um, on page 3, um, a, uh, num item number 6, a Director of Engineering Services memo regarding do doing some bulge outs at uh, Windsor and Monterey Avenue. And uh, later on in the agenda, there are two letters that were written to Council um, that had some concerns with money being spent in those things. So I just bring that to your attention because by passing these minutes, uh, that indicates to staff that we want some action and therefore they would be uh, completed. And so if anyone has um, some questions I'd like to discuss, now would be the time. Councilor John. Yeah, yes, I did read those two uh, letters, and they talked in terms of uh, uh, there, there wasn't a need for traffic calming. When we looked at this, um, it really was part and parcel of a safe route to school for children, uh, narrowing the distance that uh, kids uh, would be exposed across that, which at certain hours of the day can be a busy road in winter. It's quite wide, much wider than uh, most of the other side streets. So it really was a child safety and walking to school, not so much a traffic calming for us, so maybe the writers weren't aware of that. 
I, I think that's uh, um, absolutely correct. I think that's uh, my observation as well. I also think that's where we put that's where we put it in crosswalk. I don't think there's a crosswalk at St. David that they were talking about. There is no crosswalk at St. David, no. Well, I thought that this was the tie into the new crosswalk for the reasons that Councilman Jensen is raising. Absolutely. Okay, so. There's some one other point, because uh, I think one of the letter writers brings up the fact that we have, the, we have that very odd intersection of transit points. Uh, Correct. And uh, how the, the visibility is, is, uh, is a little problematic depending on direction. I mean, maybe one of those, in, in the fullness of time, the engineer can bring back to see if that can't be improved for the traffic circle or uh, for something that uh, we've seen uh, in other communities that appear to have worked. So that may not be a, such a bad idea that was been brought to our attention and we at some point in time call it. Okay. Anyone else have any comments? On these minutes? Okay. Karen? Uh, when we had oops, when we had last time and I don't know if Ms. Walker is ready for this. Should have given her the heads up, but uh, she was away last time, and I think uh, I know uh, I had a few questions about the, uh, the budget figures, and, uh, and I, I don't know if uh, Councillor Herbert did, but um, one of the things that uh, stood out for me was the license and permits, uh, the the variance in that, and uh, in the income. Now I appreciate this was only to the end of August. Is there any concern about that we were only by the end of August we were still four hundred thousand dollars short? of what we had budgeted. We had budgeted uh, an income of uh, a little over 900000 a year to date was just a little over 500 so it was about 400 uh, differences. There's some expectation that uh, we'll meet the budget figure. Is that a fair enough um, No, I'm just conferring with <laughs> the Director of Planning and Buildings. Um, we had budgeted for the building permit revenue to come in from the Obey High School um, construction and he's just told me that it looks like that's going to be delayed, so um, we will most probably not meet our budget. However, um, that extra money that we would not, because we don't normally get that kind of um, revenue from building permits, um, I had allocated to a, as, as a um, transfer into our capital works reserve. So if we don't get the money this year, we just won't do that transfer. So it's not going to affect any of our other public works or anything yeah. like that. That's uh, right. right. And uh, the other one was that I uh, may not be so much of a disparity, but just that where we are in the season, I noticed uh, we're at about two thirds on the parks and rec revenue. So is that pretty well on target for this time of year? <laughs> um, I believe so. I, I think they, they are looking carefully at their, especially their expenditures, um, but probably the parks and rec. Recreation director would be better able to answer that question. Oh, right. Councillor, of course. Um, thank you very much. I think, Councillor, on that particular issue, on the uh, on the uh, uh, income from the direct uh, facilities, they're still they're still on budget. I think they're they're slightly concerned, as are all the rec facilities in the region, that their their revenues are beginning to turn down. And uh, certainly in the Western communities, they're, they're having to uh, readjust their budgets. Okay, anything else on that? Okay, call the question. Those in favor? Country? Motion carries. I just had a note. Is there any, is there any seats left in the house? No? Okay, so I just had a note for those of you who are expecting an impromptu uh, appearance by Conrad Flaps tonight to embarrass the mayor. He's not able to make it, so that's good. He was going to apparently sing a song to me, so uh, okay, I just got to know that he's not coming. So anyone who's here to listen to the Conrad Flaps can now leave. So um, Okay, so the first item of business is uh, bylaw enforcement, and maybe Mr. Thomason or Mr. Brennan, you can introduce us, please. Uh, yes, this is... Uh Actually, uh, uh, work that has been taken uh, by the owner but without permits. Uh, it started back in 1996, um, and uh, they, they did actually stop work, but they never proceeded with any permit application. 
for 14 years, and then they started work again. So we had to place another stop work order on this property. Uh, and uh, so at this time, recommending notice be placed on title, and uh, that would uh, help uh, assist in get any owners to come in. There's actually some variances involved that would be required on this building and building permits. So uh, once those were taken care of, then a notice could be removed from title. I did meet with the owners this morning and went through the process so they understand what they have to do. It seemed like they would be proceeding uh, with application in the next few uh, month or two. Okay. Uh, Dr. Piercy, um when, when one of these uh, orders comes before council, uh, we are required uh, to give you an opportunity, if you wish, you. to address council. Please come forward, Dr. Pierce. I come before council half in hand uh, with the, the two uh, statements by uh, Roy uh, Tomlinson, uh, but there does need to be some explanation. And the explanation goes back to 1996 when the house that had been built on our property had been jacked up, moved over to Woodlawn Place because our garage was built in 1900 to go with that. So it's a heritage garage, it's in Stuart Stark's book. Anyway, when the man was working on the translocated house, we had the contractor pop over because by then we'd acquired this house. And we asked him, what did he think of it? And he said, the thing's going to rot into the earth if you don't do some work on the foundation to, to stabilize it. So we said, well, can you do that? And he said, yes. Uh, partway through or near the end of what I call stabilization, a stop work order was given, and we have respected that through to the present day. We received no communication between 1996 and I believe uh, 2010. So that's infraction number one, for which I didn't know we had to take out the thing, so I claimed stupidity. So that's guilty as charged. The second offense occurs in, I think, May 10th of, uh, May, May 4th of 2011. The uh, garage has an upstairs. There were steps coming down, not in the original plan, but probably put in in the 50s. They were rotting off. Kids go up and down to play there, and it became a hazard. So I took it down and put up a ladder so I could access the, the second story space. Having put the ladder up, it became obvious the ladder was a hazard. So last year, we decided to put some steps back up. Now, without a site visit, it's difficult to know. But basically, the land slopes up to a rock, so you can gain four feet without steps by going a little south, put some steps, put a little landing, some more steps, and you're up there. So I figured as I get older, and I am getting older, that would be a good way to access the storage space, which is, I guess, where I'm going to put my round to it stuff, which I never got around to 1996, and I never got around to May 10th of this year. This year we decided to set out to prevent the building totally rocking out because it, it was go back six years older than Oak Bay. And the siting might be Rattenbury's fault because he was involved in that development. But it's right on the back of the lot. Anyway, we started to put some steps up and we were visited by, and it may have been, I'm not sure if, uh, if uh, Ben Manning was there at the, at the initial encounter. Uh, the initial encounter consisted of a card in my door. Anyway, the second encounter this past year was strange because if I look here on your bylaw 424247, uh, subsection 6, number 4, enter lands, buildings, and premises at any reasonable time to administrate a bylaw, but must, if a resident is occupied, either obtain occupant's consent to enter the residence or give written notice to occupant 24 hours before entering it. He came, he left his card in the door, and we never heard again. 
Now we posted the thing on the wall, on the, on the steps that were half built. They were never completed. And that was the last we heard of it. So we said, well, we struck out once, we struck out again. Uh, uh, maybe we can take something over to the building people. And uh, uh, Patricia submitted something. And basically, we were told to do a bunch of steps to, to qualify. That was last year. Now, there was a fax sent to us, not by registered mail, but by fax. And I told my wife to get a new fax machine that's not a paper fax, that's not a ribbon fax. And anyway, we didn't get the fax, but we got it today from, uh, from uh, Roy. Anyway, but we didn't act on it. We left the steps exactly like they are. So no letter from council or the city to put it on the registry. So that's, that's step one. Next thing we decide, well, you can do cosmetic work. So we put a shingle roof, which is what it had originally on the roof. We started to paint the outside and sand the wood that we'd done, because that's all apparently permitted. Uh, ben Manning came over, chatted with the, I guess you'd say, a, a very intelligent handyman, to be polite, he's actually very good, and said, yeah, you're not building the steps and you're not fiddling with the foundation. Carry on. I don't know exactly how many days later, and Patricia came home and our man was gone. He phoned that evening to say he'd been terrified because Ben Manning had returned and said to him that he was photographing, going to photograph his car, he'd get a big fine if he did anything on our building. So again, no, no contact with the owner, uh, just with the worker. So anyway, he, uh, so at that point, I thought, well, Oak Bay's just as bad as they say it is about getting anything done. There's a 1900 building, and here we are trying to just restore it, and we're not getting a lot of help, even though I've screwed up twice. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not guilty. But, you know, quite frankly, this feels like a public flogging. I guess it's as close to I get in Oak Bay. But I guess it's, it's not, nothing it's, more severe. No, it's not meant to be a public flogging. And in fact, hopefully we can work something out here. No, I'm but saying that's the, what it feels like. First thing on the agenda, an embarrassment because I violated two rules and I have to speak to uh, my own defense. There's nothing in the uh, Oak Bay website that's of any help whatsoever about figuring out what this means. Bylaw, contract, indication, notice. My first help when I went to the internet the other day was actually a little thing in the NIMO, and then I went to the CRD, and they defined the same information you know. But the interesting line here is the vast majority of building inspection processes are successfully carried out without the need to place a notice on the title. So, and so Dr. Piercy, um, is, is there an opportunity here for you to finish this work with building permit in the next three months? Three months? Three months. No, not with the... Uh, with what uh, was laid out by Roy Tomlinson, the cost would be inordinate. Okay, so can I? I can have I to do a zoning variance. I have to get a structural engineer, and there's a whole list of stuff in his letter. So the cost would be prohibitive. Okay, it's just a garage, but I'm getting the same. It may as well be a four-story building. Okay, Mr. Tomlinson, do you want to comment on that? Is this how how onerous is this? that the building department is asking on this garage? Well, essentially, essentially, back in 1996, they, they raised the building a little bit uh, and uh, put a new foundation in. At that time, the letter that was written to the owners stipulated that they needed to stop work. They needed variance for height, setback, building height, and occupiable height. So that was laid out back in 1996. We're, still dealing with the same issue, um, and, but we haven't actually received enough information about plans or anything that we could actually issue a permit, and uh, they didn't understand the variance requirement, so I explained that to them this morning, what was required. Um, it, it is going to probably take a number of months to do, because the variance process is going to be you know, four to eight weeks, uh, and that's after they get the drawings done. Okay. Uh, so we're probably talking six or seven months before this is going to be resolved. Okay, so let's say this would take nine months probably from start to finish, okay? If if you wanted to do it, if you wanted to finish it, and if you want to spend the money on, on it, I mean, all those are presumptions. Okay, I'm looking for some solution here, yeah, but yeah, carry on. Yeah, Your Honor, I, I respect that. I, I do query, you know, I, I'm no lawyer. 
unwarranted intrusion into the property without following the section here upsets me by Mr. Manning. The second thing that upsets me is human compassion and kindness. He did not first visit this year to the worker. He treated him quite nicely. He then returned to say his boss, and I don't know who that is, was incensed and he wanted it shut down. So the worker goes a second time. My wife comes over here to talk to the front desk. The front desk says, no, you can keep painting, sanding, and working on the, the structure itself because you're not fiddling with the foundation and you're not completing the stairs. So what shocked me was a lack of civil, civil correspondence. The question also is, why is this coming to council a year after the problem last year when the offense this year, there's zero offense this year. We did painting, roof, and stuff. So there's, I wouldn't want to use the word vendetta, but I can't think of a, a kinder word. Someone is upset, and I don't know why they're upset. I mean, most courts of law, you can find out who's charged you with which conviction and who's complained. But this is one you can't. In fact, the letter we received by registered mail doesn't really tell you anything about what the problem is. We met today to find out how far back in history it went. And at the end of a very cordial meeting, uh, uh, Roy explained that he'd still be speaking against it. In other words, any attempt to establish reconciliation. Now, the reason we didn't meet with him before was when we got the registered letter early September. Patricia's mom ended up in the hospital. And being a mother-in-law, she survived. Anyway, uh, so we were distracted. And that's why, and now last week when my wife wanted to meet with Roy, he was on holidays. So we couldn't meet the deadline of the 5th of October. Okay. Um, I'm, Mr. Thomas, did you have something to add to this? Well, um, and, and I, I mean, I don't want to go into a long dialogue of, you know, who did what and wrong here and there. Uh, rather, I, I think this is a, you know, a matter that, uh, started many years ago, and, and there wasn't compliance back then. Um, it, they applied for a building permit in 2010. Um, they were sent a fax uh, requirements, but they never even contacted the building department after a year uh, just started working again on other things on the, on the building. So we're, we're a little disillusioned as, as to sort of, you know, what, what are they doing? I mean, yes, they re roofed then they started cutting skylights into the roof. And so, you know, some of the things are going a little bit beyond just simply paint and, and re-roofing. So I, I, I thought this was the appropriate method, was to actually, you know, okay. uh, go forward with a notice on title, and then when it's resolved, we'll remove it. Okay. Any questions for Doc? Yes. <coughs> I, have a, I have a question. Uh, can you give us a, kind of a reasonable estimate for when you might have all of this together and, and, and proceed, because I think one solution might be to, to get a reason less and then, then to, to put this over and uh, not proceed with the uh, putting anything in title at this point and just to kind of um, deferring it until you think you'd uh, be ready to make the applications that are necessary. Well, it depends on finances. Uh, the plans that were submitted last year were not to, to fiddle with the foundation, they were to deal with the steps. So they, contrary to your statement, they were not, they were, those plans were submitted after the stop work order to see if we could finish the steps. So they were not in an all-inclusive plan. I mean, if we want to do a heritage right revitalization thing, I mean, all we have to do see is that house that can't sell on, uh, on Fowl Bay, if there's a high heritage revitalization. You gotta have deep pockets. What, what's a, what would be a reasonable estimate then? Cause, uh, well, I, one possibility is never. Just leave it with the foundation mm -hmm. like it is and not have steps put the ladder back up and carry on. I mean, a more a calmer, a calmer approach when I've had time to think it over, maybe to find someone cheaper than J.C. Scott who did the overwrought plans that were at the uh, uh, city yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, someone else, we had, it's just too much money. Not, not for the foundation, but uh, you know, with a structural engineer to come in to secure a garage. Would, would nine months do? Nine months would be fine to try and work it out. Okay, I think that seems to be a reason. Councilor Nate, then Councilor. Well, I, I 
I guess my comment is, um, I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm really troubled that there hasn't been a conversation yet, and I don't understand why that's the case and why we're sitting here trying to sort out the deals here. And um, so, I mean, I, I hear um, there's been concerns as expressed by uh, staff, and I also hear a willingness uh, from you, Dr. Piercy, to, to move this forward. So I, my sense is with, with that sort of um, um, attitude um, that it would seem that we could, something could be worked out and that the, um, the notice on the title seems a bit uh, unnecessary. Um, in my view, so I, I, I'm not. I, I don't see the the value of that at this point. Okay, Councillor Hood. Well, I guess I've got a question for Roy and a question for Doctor. Uh, Doctor, um, I'm a bit confused. Roy, is that there was a foundation put under part of this building, and and is it? Is it adequate? Has it been inspected? Does it need to be inspected? Is it part of the problem, or is it all done? Well, it's it's complete, but we don't know what was done. We, I mean, that concrete block, it's there. They d did it without permits. Nobody's reviewed it. Um, so it needs to be inspected. It's similar, like the beams that were to reinforce the floor. We don't know, you know, sizing or anything. There's very little information. So that's part of the problem. Yeah. And then, the other problem is to put a new roof on, which is fine, but you're concerned there's some skylights which are an issue. Uh, I don't know that they're an issue because uh, they No, but I mean, they normally, they, they, could be, yeah. they normally require some approval. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I mean, I agree with Councilor Jensen. I think uh, Dr. Kersey's always been a pretty reputable character in this community, and I would think if we could defer this and uh, find a time that's suitable and work it out. Well, let's, uh, let's think about uh, nine months. It's been suggested. I, I gave you three months to start with. And obviously, I wasn't going to go anywhere. So we got to nine months. So if, uh, if council's amenable to that, uh, why don't, have you ever heard of this section before? Never. Okay, so. Uh, In fact, it's only been applied four times here. That's right. Three that I know of and once that was deferred. That's right. And, uh, it is, is it, it's sort of a, you know, I, I, it generally implies exasperation on the staff part. Obviously, there's a breakdown here in communication. So, I mean, I, I think uh, uh, this is an opportunity if you like to go back and talk to staff and, and put a non nine month deadline, and this will come back uh, probably in August next year. So, if it hasn't been resolved. Well, that's fine, because frankly, I was terrified to talk to. Roy after Ben's encounter, but then now that I've met with Roy, I'm going to talk to him. Good, good. And any comments that you've made about um, uh, bylaw enforcement? Obviously, senior staff are here. They take note of that, yeah. and they'll follow up tomorrow. So, is, okay. Is there, is there a heritage issue involved in this? That I don't your know. House is it's, your house is starts, it's, a, it's one of two surviving 1900 McClure garages. Like your house is designated, I think, is it not? Both houses are, yeah. yeah. So is the grant designated? No. It's not, it's at the lesser level of designation. Oh, listed. Um, just a question and a comment. Yeah, go ahead. Um, now there are Welcome the, back, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> there are the two properties, Dr. Piercy, and the garage, as I understand it, is not associated with the house that you live in, but the one next door. That's correct. Um, and, and of course, the level of protection would depend on what the by how the bylaw reads, if there is a heritage designation bylaw for that, and I don't know that at this point. They're both listed or not listed. It, it's not designated. I'm not talking about Stuart Stark's book. It's what depends. Oh no, no, but I mean with the council, they're both. They're both. They're on the heritage register. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but they're not. Uh, what do you call it? Designated. They're not okay. like the house on the running meet that caused a little. Yeah, yeah, and, and we, would, we would then have to look to the statement of significance for that property, which may or may not include the garage, and yeah, they're both, at this point we don't know. The statements are all produced by the staff. Okay. So, uh, last piece of advice would be to uh, talk to the uh, Heritage Foundation, because there are some grants available for a certain upgrading of certain structures, and you might just follow that up as well. Okay, so... Thank you very much. Um, 
Could we get a motion then to defer? I would move we uh, defer this item and turn it in to put a nine months. Second. 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 All those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Next one. Okay. Uh, next item is a request by Kelly White for financial assistance. Um, what's your wish? Members of Council? Um, I didn't it's, know. A, it's unusual. I didn't know it got very <laughs> <laughs> um, I would support giving him any hundred bucks anyway. Um, I, I'm not sure if we've ever done anything like that before. Um, I mean, this is a great achievement. Um, it's very impressive to be able to go to nationals. I'd like to know how we did because it says that the, that the nationals were this week, past weekend. So I'm not sure if someone's here to say how they did. Um, is there someone here from this application? No, no one. My only, my only concern would be, um, you know, we precedent here, um, there are all kinds of applications like this, and just because the individual who's written such a good letter happens to know someone who works in this municipality or did work in this municipality and invited them to do it, I mean, I think you'd have to look at all applications as opposed to just one individual. It's just a fairness issue. Okay. Can we move receipt? Second, uh, those in favor? Just a comment. I was going to say, um, for, mm -hmm. I think I think money, um, uh, donating money or, or uh, allocating money to um, this type of um, effort is, although it is very commendable, as you say, does set a precedent. But um, there might be a way to acknowledge that on the part of council. Perhaps if the um, the applicant uh, came back and said, "Would you?" Acknowledges to a letter of support or something like that, but without any money attached, I think it would be a very different matter. And I, I would certainly be in favor of that if there was a specific reason or a need to do that. And you know, if he approached me or she approached me, uh, anyone can do that. And I can make yes. a donation of, say, a notebook book, and they can use yes. it as an auction, that kind of thing. Very different matter. Okay. Uh, did I call the question? I did. No, I didn't. It was in favor. Contrary, motion carries. <coughs> uh, the next is a request for a block party. Second. Just for the record, I don't think we've ever turned down a block party. Um, all those in favor? Contrary, motion carries. Um, request to occupy municipal parking space. We've done this uh, both in the municipal hall and more recently in a much better location opposite the Monterey Center. Move approval of second day. You have a mover and second day. Okay, those in favor? Contrary, motion carries. Next, request by Rotary. Second. Move and seconded. Uh, those in favor? Contrary, motion carries. Next is request to occupy public property in the Approval. Second. Seconded. Any questions on that? Could Ms. Larry, could you just explain to Council how you're going to link the front? This is a new event, and you've got quite a good audience here to listen. Um, how are you going to link the uh, the pumpkins in the back of the hall um, with the street front? Yeah, would you mind just telling us? That, that mic doesn't. So beginning on the weekend or early the following week, we'll have displays in some of the shop windows that'll be advertising the large display that'll be in the back. Because that'll drive traffic through to the display, which will then generate the donations to Tour Rock. And we'll have signage as well in the shop windows and possibly signage in the front. I just have to work out how that will work okay. uh, in terms of security. So, so you're going to fence the back, uh, back 40? Yes. Okay, and so we'll have security as well. 24-7? Uh, fencing will be 24-7 security overnight from when the event wraps up to the 10 a.m. the next day. 
until we're all done. So I didn't understand the answer. There is security there? Yes, but not in the daytime. So when we hold the event in the evening, and then when we wrap up at 10 o'clock, commissioners okay. will come in at 10 okay. and occupy the space until 10 a.m. the following day when then there's traffic. Through good, the good. As long as there's someone there, I think it's important. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a great event. What are the dates? Uh, the 28, 29, 30, 31 for the large display, and the two weeks leading up to Halloween for the shop. Displays. Okay, how many pumpkins are going to be on display? Uh, 500. 500, yeah. good. We have some new ones for opening this year. Good. Councilor uh, I, I took the, uh, the mayor's question to be that how do you get, there's going to be some display in the front and some display in the back. Is there going to be a linkage maybe down the side where pumpkins, kind of a row of pumpkins will lead people? Oh, pumpkin the Alley. Pumpkin Alley. Uh, Yes, I mean, that would probably require setting up and taking them down each night just because they can't be left out, which isn't a huge problem, it's just a logistics consideration. Yeah. So I just think you need to leave people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was thinking, could we get them up in the tree in the front, or yeah. <laughs> how will we do that, so. Um, okay, I'll leave it up to you. Okay. Okay, uh, we've got a mover and we've got a seconder. Um, all those in favor? Okay. Motion carries, do you want to stay there for the next? Yeah. Request for approval of plans for the 2011 Christmas Christmas Festival. Second. Uh, seconded by Councillor Braithwaite. Uh, any comments on this? It's more or less the same as usual. Mm -hmm. Light up. Light up, and then we have gallery walk, which doesn't require approval. Well, it does for noise, and then we have the truck parade. Right. Okay. The yeah. And I think if we. Uh, I remember rightly, we generally um, we generally uh, eat the overtime on this. Yes. Ms. Hilton, did we do this? That was a letter I should have included. Okay, uh, let me just make sure you don't walk out of here without the Christmas gift. Um, early. Uh, early <laughs> Christmas <laughs> gift. Remind me, Ms. Hilton, if we pass this motion, do we, do we agree to pick up uh, overtime costs? We've done that in the past. I mean, if that was the intention of the mover and seconder, you could include that in the resolution that you would cover the overtime costs as in the past. Yes. On, on the, on the not, not, not for the whole of the Christmas season, just no, no. for the one day when we do for the light up. For the two road closures. Yeah. Um, okay. and spend yeah. 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 I, just, I just want to commend you for, again, bringing these, um, these events to Oak Bay. I think they're great community events, and I know that we get a lot of food and donations um, during the lighted truck parade. And, I understand you're doing a carbon offset this year for that. Yeah, I had an assessment done last year so that we could help them be a carbon neutral event. So Great. we'll pay for offsets. Okay. Thank yeah, you I so much for your work on that. No, it's good. Oh, it's good. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Uh, may I just ask one question, uh, Mayor Costin? Sure. Sorry, just before you <laughs> I didn't you recognize those dulcet tones. <laughs> um, I, I heard Ms. Leary say uh, the overtime costs are all for the two nights. What I was talking about were the overtime costs specifically related to the light up. Um, uh, there was a request to leave the costs for the road closures in last year only. Um, that wasn't received this year. So I just wanted to be sure that the resolution that you're contemplating here is the overtime cost for the light up light. I thought it was the road closures as well. Mm -hmm. It's the road closures for the, for the truck parade. And the light up. And the light up. And the light up, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But the overtime only for one night. I understand that. Because there shouldn't be any overtime for the truck parade. It's a very short event. No, and, and our staff donate that time there mm -hmm. for collecting in the village. Yeah, to support the mustard seed. That's right. So it, it's only it's only <coughs> it's only for the road closures and any staff that's required to come in to make sure these always lights work. Yes. Okay. Because one year, one year we left it to the mayor to turn all the lights on and it didn't work. <laughs> so ever since then we've spent a little money in overtime. So the community thanks you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, avoid that embarrassment. Thanks very much. Okay. So I think we're clear on what the motion is. It's moved and seconded. All those in favor? Country motion carries. Okay, thanks very thank much, Dave. Next item is uh, all about the uh, Ope Lodge, and uh, at the last meeting. Uh, Several people did ask me, uh, how would you be conducting this? And I said at the time, because of the new information coming back uh, with uh, council's indulgence, we will treat it like almost like a committee meeting, even though we're in council. So 
we invite uh, any comments from the public at the same time. Is that is that agreed? Still agreed? Okay, thanks. And Councilor Copley? Um, I will excuse myself from the discussion <laughs> as previously due to the possible procession of conflict. Okay, thanks so much, Lee. Okay, uh, the applicant's here again tonight, so welcome back. And uh, I think you've got a PowerPoint set up, ready with uh, some some new uh, drawings. So why don't we leave it to you to present? There's a couple of uh, seats. Jim, do you want to? Jim Cook in the back. Are you doing yoga back there, sir? Hi. Uh, I, Jim was a seat right in the front here, right, right in the very front. Oh. Um, and I know there was a seat vacated in the middle just now. Mr. Clark, we not. Oh, you got the microphone. Yeah. Good. Okay. Your Worship and members of Council, um, just following up on last uh, the last meeting last last week. Um, and in response to uh, the comments that we heard from the public as well uh, as your own uh, comments, uh, we have like to walk you through a brief presentation tonight of the focus of the revisions uh, that we have um, considered and actually amended in our application. Um, but before I get going into the detail, I just wanted to introduce that we do have uh, with us tonight uh, Bob Lapham, um, Rudy Vandenbroek from Viha. Uh, now he has to leave at nine o'clock. So if there are any questions specific to Viha, if we could focus those uh, before the others, it would be appreciated. And uh, representatives from Baptist Housing, Howard Johnson, Dale Kahn. Uh, so in response to uh, the comments that we received, uh, our process after that meeting, we actually I, we returned to the site on Tuesday. Um, and uh, both myself and representatives of Baptist Housing re-looked at a number of the points that had been brought up. Um, we then consulted uh, and looked at a series of revisions that uh, we could propose to, to respond meaningfully uh, to the comments that we heard. And, uh, and then we met with staff and talked about the process of introducing uh, those as amendments to our existing application in time for it to come back uh, to you tonight. And so for a couple of days last week, we worked with staff to amend the application and that has been circulated to you. In addition to that, um, part of our, our ongoing uh, communication with the neighborhood, uh, even though time didn't permit for us to, to, to have individual contact with the neighbors in the, the three days that we have midweek, um, we did, uh, and I'm, through Baptist Housing, um, and the relationship and communication with John Rankin as a representative of that neighborhood group. Um, we put together the drawing that you have in front of you, uh, the rendered site plan that summarized, correct, that summarized graphically um, the range of, of responses that we were proposing in our amendment to uh, our application. So we provided you with uh, the same copy that went out to uh, John and subsequently to the neighborhood um, uh, for you tonight. So that colored uh, site plan went out for uh, the neighborhood's information as well. We wanted you to have the same information that was made available to the public and we have copied staff on that um, as well. Um, then following the, uh, the amended uh, plan, uh, which I'd like to walk you through right now, um, a series of uh, major uh, changes as have been identified on that drawing, and I'll just um, go through the bullet point on the right. Um, is that the same as here? That is the same as there, correct. Uh, so the, the, the major revisions have been to shift the building northward, as was discussed, that um, if there was a choice between the saving the trees along Cadboro Bay Road um, versus the impact on the neighbors, that, that, um, that there was determined to be less impact toward the more public street frontage on Cadro Bay Road than on the properties to the uh, east. So we shifted the building northward by six uh, meters. In addition to that, um, we looked at rotating the wings of the building inward as had been brought up during uh, some of the council comments last week. Uh, looked at parts of the building rotating the stairwells inward as well, all in an effort to kind of compact the footprint of the building on the site 
and to move it uh, further to the north. Um, another uh, item that we looked at was to look at closing the entrance point off of uh, Cranmore Road um, and then to look at ways of developing that, um, that existing location to be more of a pedestrian gateway or amenity uh, and a focus for uh, pedestrians and for people on, the, on that south exposure. Um, we looked at uh, the reconfiguration of the what would be then a remaining single entrance point off of Cadbury Bay Road. We looked at reducing the overall building height by a meter, um, the relocation of the kitchen to the west wing at the basement level, um, and the relocation of the loading area under the uh, courtyard, again at that basement level in the center of the site. Um, and as I had indicated at our last meeting that we would use this week to report back to you if there were any additional variances that might be required to accommodate these uh, increases in setback uh, and the building shift. And there is one additional, which is a proposal to relax the front yard setback on Cadboro Bay Road from 7.62 meters down to 4.5 meters. So that is the single additional variants that we have added to our application. So this uh, just graphically will show you the impact of what I've just described. So what you see shaded in the dark uh, gray is the previous uh, layout or footprint of the building and uh, the effect of shifting it northward the six meters. And then the effect of the reconfiguration of the building wings by pulling it inward. You can see I've illustrated here. And those in combination have um, allowed for that building footprint to, to create uh, much more significant uh, setbacks on the east side. I think you can see that uh, ghosted in here with this uh, dotted line is the previous proposal. So in, in many cases these are uh, near, nearly double the setbacks from the previous by the building shift and the building reconfiguration. Here again, this illustrates the three outlines, the uh, existing building footprint here, the previous one proposed in the light blue, and then the shaded in is the current or revised siting of the building. The impact on the existing trees along Cadbor Bay Road as expected, uh, this was moving into the tree preservation area, uh, and so uh, it has resulted in an increase in seven uh, oak trees, primarily in this area here, being impacted. Um, of those seven, uh, three of them were, were listed in the Arborist Report as being in poor condition, and four were in good condition. And so the net impact of the reduced setback and the moving the building out to Cadbury Bay Road would be uh, an increase of, of four oak trees over what we had previously indicated that would be lost. Um, in good condition, three in poor condition. Um, it's our, our belief that through the landscaping efforts that can be made in the new landscape treatment on our site, that we will be able to, um, to replant that area and possibly replant in, in a location where they're not uh, compromising the sidewalk as they currently are. In a number of locations right now, they are, um, they are reducing the sidewalk width and um, pushing the sidewalk uh, close to Cadbury Bay Road. So we'd be looking uh, through the landscape design, more detailed landscape design process to, um, to reinstate landscaping that could grow to a mature uh, nature and, and really complement or complete again the, uh, the street tree character along Cadbury Bay Road in time. One additional item that we uh, looked at in further detail was what to do with the interface of the southern end of the site with Cranmore and the residents on the opposite side of the street that are most directly impacted. So what we've looked at here, and you can see the, um, the result of, of restricting the access to a single uh, point off of Cadbury Bay Road, the truck movements um, are contained on site for the loading and for exiting, uh, but we have introduced a right out uh, access point here onto Cadbury Bay Road, so there is a looped drop off on Cadbury Bay Road. Um, we've reviewed these plans with the fire department, and um, they are happy with 
the access that they have to the building and to the site. Their fire response point is at the midpoint along this side of the building. It's a fire hydrant here, and that's where they will have their main uh, ancillary uh, enunciator panel and their main response point at the front door. Um, they, do, they did indicate that um, for this site, um, on any call, that they would require a backup from neighboring municipalities and they have requested that they maintain the ability to provide for emergency access only, so that's only in the case of an event, that there would be the ability to have a second point to bring in additional equipment onto the site. Um, so the closing of this is a closing with the exception of emergency access only uh, by the fire department um, in an event. So this is a picture of the existing uh, driveway as it currently is, and one of the things we have looked at doing is to modify that to improve the quality um, and the access of a, a sidewalk from the sidewalk along Cranmore into the site leading up to the building. Where else you'll see on a, on a small landscape plan, developing a small plaza and developing the surface treatment of this, um, this um, area here to be very plaza-like with pavers. Um, it would provide emergency vehicle access, but it would have a semicircular ramp that would deal with the major grade change between here and the center of the site and then back out to the sidewalk. So I really feel like this area here could feel a lot like public realm um, if you compare to the existing, which is uh, a bench with its back turned right on the curb. Um, you know, you could see that, that uh, in properly landscaping and developing this, this could enhance um, significantly what is current use of that area, which is uh, people looking for the sudden exposure on the site. And um, so we believe this would be a real public amenity. Um, and here's some detailed plans of the existing, which has a small cut through uh, sloped ramp up into the parking lot and then the, the existing sidewalk and drive all. What we're proposing is to develop that with a plaza feel, have the bench located um, at a slight grade separation from the street and sidewalk, and then to introduce layers of landscape screening. So these areas would be hedge planting, both uh, at uh, containing that um, public plaza space, but also midway through the site, another layer of hedging and, and uh, planting material for mature trees. And I think those two things in combination will take what is a fairly stark exposure right now and uh, really inhabit that with um, as much natural vegetation and landscape screening as possible and uh, will really go a long way to uh, mitigating the impact. Um, right now you can see the, the layering effect of the landscape screening. And I think this is just an example of what I've alluded to previously, that given the opportunity through the more detailed design process that has yet to happen on the project, this is a kind of an example of how uh, we can often respond through the more detailed landscape design in a way that um, immediately uh, responds to comments from uh, comments that we've received from the neighbors across the street in, in this case. But um, we would certainly do the same as we work up and down the property lines uh, consider the interface between our site and the neighbors and uh, be able to accommodate uh, individual requests um, and to vary the landscape plan along its length to be responsive to context. This is just a larger um, blow up of that. And here you have a representation of the site plan. I think one of the other important uh, items to note is that the increase in the setbacks that's been achieved here has really had the net effect of preserving most of what uh, is visible as the knoll um, because now we're, uh, we're actually back within the existing footprint of the existing building and courtyard and um, in so doing we, we will be able to retain um, the, the full uh, topography that's associated with that knoll and its sight lines from Cadbor Bay Road. So I'll just quickly um, go through a short video, which we did uh, to do a mock-up of, let's see, make sure I've got this on here. I'm gonna have to re relocate the file here. 
uh, we were asked to look at, um, at better representing uh, on the model uh, the impact along Hampshire Road. And uh, what I have here, uh, actually, no, I messed up. Is a. Um, bear with me for a sec here. Video clip that will show a cutaway of the model. So previously, the uh, the model had trees and buildings that were obscuring the uh, the view of the model. So here, what we've done is cut away on a section line through the center of the street. So we're now moving from Bowker up, and these are this is the heritage residence, and then working up. You can see in context now the, the buildings in relationship to the. Uh, modeling of the existing planting and behind and then we'll come back down and we'll cut away a section that takes you right into the building so you can see the relationship even more clearly. So this is moving down toward Cranmore location of that entrance point down here. So now the section cut is now moving inward and we'll end up cutting through the buildings. And as we come back down the street, um, we should probably be able to see more directly the, uh, the relationship of the existing and the proposed. We've also modeled, if you can kind of see between the buildings here, the context of the topography as it rises through the site. The, the point of the fingertip there. So you can see the, the profile of the knoll So the net effect of, of increasing the setbacks as we have has really been to position the building entirely behind the knoll. In addition to um, the moves that we've made in plan on the site, uh, we did relook at all of the, uh, the grading on the site and uh, we've proposed to lower the entire building by an, an additional one meter. And that would take us down to the absolute uh, minimum on the site, which is uh, a base uh, on the lowest level of 18 meters, which um, if one wants to see in perspective, it's the, the lowest point at the existing grade separated loading bay um, is at 18 meters, so where the drains are at the bottom of that sloped uh, loading bay. So that would be pushing our building down, uh, its lowest elevation down to that very lowest point. So those are, are in summary, um, the series of, of revisions that um, we've proposed and uh, amended our application with. And uh, this, do you, do yes, you happen to have a cut of coming down Cabra Bay Road? Um, I don't have a, a video clip, but I do have the model, which I can load up here. I just want to look at the public. So in this view here, you can see the effect of pulling the building. It's actually two meters uh, further to the right than the existing building. And uh, the, the effect of retaining the sight lines through to the entire knoll at the intersection of Bowker and Cabo Bay. Okay, thanks. Did you, was there anyone else from your team that wanted to add anything at this stage? I think we'll just, we can just respond to questions. Okay. And um, Rudy, I can never, I can never pronounce your last name. I'm sorry. Um, ben Denbrook. Ben Denbrook. Um, is that a good Dutch name? Good Dutch name. Yeah. Um, so, did you want to add anything? I know you've got to leave early. Um, no, I was here to answer any specific questions associated with 
health care issues of the okay. um, and just okay. okay, so we're opening up for uh, questions. No Please come forward, introduce yourself, and um, make some comments. Madam, you first. Okay. Hi there. My name is Lois Bender, and along with my family, I live at 2361 Cranmore Road. Um, I have been part of a group of at least 30 neighbors who have shared concerns since viewing the Gary Oaks Village Project in the September 24th open house, which was just really about two weeks ago. I'd like to thank you for hearing our concerns and thoughts regarding the application for variance uh, and for the proposed Gary Oaks Village. As neighbours of Oak Bay, we would like, as neighbours of the Oak Bay Lodge, we would like to emphasize that we strongly support the building of a facility where residents can be cared for with dignity. We're pleased that the land currently occupied by the Lodge will remain in public hands and that the land use is committed to seniors' care. We believe that with consultation, the Gary Oaks facility can be a facility where personalized care is provided in a building that reflects and is architecturally integrated into the surrounding neighborhood. Since the Council of a Whole meeting on Monday, October 3rd, Baptist Housing has provided the revised plans that we saw here today, altering the position of the footprint, moving the kitchen, and, and closing the Cranmore exit to all but emergency vehicles are certainly improvement. And I would really like to thank you for um, extending the detail on that Cranmore exit. It, it really helps make it a more visual picture, and I think you've incorporated a lot of the ideas that I know that have been shared with you on that Cranmore exit. So thank you for that. This revision um, really addresses a lot of the traffic issues that are specific to Cranmore. However, um, I do want to say that I believe that the main concerns, the main issues, are yet to be addressed. Our concerns today are really twofold. The first pertains to the request for variance in parking stalls and, more importantly, in the proposed increase of height. Both of these issues are really driven by density. Six stories and even five are imposing and seriously impact the neighbourhood. It is really laudable that the, the, the Baptist Housing has designed individual rooms for residents. This is a design feature that we strongly support. However, proposal to increase the number of beds to 320 is driving the whole design in an unsuitable way. The result is a towering, massive building envelope. This increased mass of a building is simply too high and too big for this small, oddly shaped piece of property, which is already a hill. When I think about it from the residents who are in the building, I have to ask a couple of questions. How do residents with mobility issues easily access green space on a regular basis when they are stuck on the fifth and the sixth floor? And furthermore, if you think about it, if you were one of these residents on the fifth or sixth floor and your mobility was compromised and you were fragile and there was smoke in the hallway or an earthquake that was happening, how would your, how would your safety be assured? From a neighborhood point of view, six stories and even five seriously impacts potential property values and more importantly, the quality of life of residents around it. From a monetary point of view, projects can and have been designed that are financially feasible and are less than or no, or no more than the current large size. The second concern that I'd like to voice involves the need for meaningful, sincere and transparent consultation on a building that we will be living with and possibly in. We simply have too many unanswered questions. The council and the community should not be pressured to make hasty decisions on such an important project. We urge the council to vote against these applications for variance. We encourage a community forum where there is opportunity for two-way dialogue. The neighbours and broader Oak Bay community 
are in support of having a quality care facility. Let's reduce the density. Let's reduce the height of this imposing structure. Let's take the time to plan a gold standard project that provides a safe, personalized setting for Oak Bay residential care and that integrates harmoniously with the surrounding environment. Let's build it, but let's build it right. Right for the residents, right for the neighborhood, and right for the community as a whole. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Ben. So, uh, I guess the next speaker, John Rank. Yes. Uh, thank you, Your Worship and Council. The application variance before the Mayor and Council today <clears throat> is a height variance. 45 feet or 13.7 meters, and also for parking spaces, 213, 230, two, uh, 320 required, asking for 107, not an insignificant request. Tonight, a decision has to be made to move forward or say no. This is a major decision as it will impact the nature of care being offered to the community. Two additional stories, parking and traffic consequences will impact not just the immediate, but significant portion of Bay change the skyline of Oak Bay, as we can see by what we just saw. Be there for 60 years, and it's important to note that we're not saying that if you reject it tonight, that this will mean a cessation of care in Oak Bay. Some people are saying we're against care. That's definitely not the case. As Lois pointed out, it's better to have a slight delay for two months and do it right. When I initially became involved in this, it was not to stop the development. My concern had been the lack of information, community consultations, and assessment of alternatives for council to make a sound decision. I became aware of this, thankfully, on August 24th, approximately, about two months ago when Tara informed me that this map was before council. I was surprised. Further, I was shocked when no one bordering on the property, when I made a walk around 50 homes, no one knew about it. Neighbors for a project that when I looked into, that plans had been submitted to Oak Bay on May 24th, 2011, August, near the end of August, no one knew about it. A project and on March 9th, 2011, the Capital Regional Hospital District, of which I'm mayor, is on the board, announced it would invest funds in it. A project and on May 17th, 2010, over a year ago, B Hall announced would commence negotiations with the Baptist Housing, yet no one knew anything about it a project that would impact our community, impact the neighbors. Well, in the last less than two months, we made progress. I must admit, as has been pointed out, is I've been fortunate that um, the Baptist Housing has been very cooperative. But honestly, do we have enough, enough information? I think the information we have received have, has raised more questions than answered the concerns. The onus is on the Baptist building to resolve this. And we look at this picture here and everything looks nice. It's nice and flat, a little bit of green trees, etc. But, you know, we didn't have a model, so I brought my own. Right? Don't worry. They're not going to smell like the mayor. Right? We just take our little models here. If it collapses, we're in trouble. <laughs> right? We got six stories. Right? They're asking for 45 feet. Approximately, so 45 feet off of this, you come down to, down to there. A significant change. That's going to be towering over when you come down Caribou Bay Hill. It's definitely going to make a change upon our, upon our community. And yet, you can look at these bricks and say, well, you know, it's, we're worried about how our neighborhood's going to look. But we have to recognize what drives density is the size. The problem why we're having issues with parking, the reason why we're going to have issues with um, uh, as well as traffic, etc., is because if you put too much density, too much building on, what happens? You get more, too many people, you get too big a building. And that is what's happening here. 320 up from 280. Where did this 320 come from? Some civil servant, we know about our government, some civil servant sitting in a corner, suddenly comes, comes up with 320. You've got to look at that number. That number has not been addressed enough, that 320. You have to go back and address it. I know Tara tried last time about it. We got nowhere upon that issue. It's driving it. Another concern we have is that when you look at this property, it's small, it's awkward. I really felt sorry for the architect as I told him. Someone told, came along and said, we want 320. Okay, 320 was a piece of property. 
and the Baptists, and I do admire them, said, well, we have to have our level of care. We have no problem with that. And consequently, he found himself trying to squeeze in 320 with the parameters given by the Baptist church, and it has made his life very, very difficult. But is that the way to drive a project that can influence the neighborhood? And, and so if you need a model, you can borrow my bricks. So, so parking variance of 107 and versus 320. Again, the information for that is based upon our experience. No information presented to support it. But think, 55 employees driving, cars, five trades, 60 visitors, and then you have to change the ship, already you're over. Don't think it's adequate. If they have the evidence, present it. Why is there a parking problem? Because the capacity is too great. You lower the capacity, get it to suit the land. Plus further, when we looked at it, one of us, uh, uh, well not me, we went out today and we were calculated that this property is about one-fifth the size of Windsor Park. If the equivalent of putting five of these buildings in Windsor Park, what would that look like? Would you go for that? So we're really concerned you're blindly accepting this 320. And that's why we have a municipal government for your when a government at a lower level tells you, gives you a figure, you don't have to accept it. It's your duty to, to do it. It's all been done backwards. Remember what Walker went through with Oak Bay Hotel? For Gary Oaks, the developers and their partners have been asked, what's the basis for 320? Told confidential. Imagine if other developers had told you that. What would you say to them? If you asked them to reduce the height and they said, no, we can't do it, what would you say to them? And that's the situation here. You've got to look at that number. Councillor Jensen, I believe, he got his start in politics with Hamiltonian. He addressed the issues, the community responded. Same thing with uh, when Councillor Braithwaite. She did a marvel job down there in Esteban when someone was putting in a building that did not suit the environment. The neighbors were concerned, the neighborhood was concerned, some changes. This is what we've got to do here. This is a far bigger project, have a greater impact for 60 years. But where is the homework being done? So I basically say is, is that you've got to do it right. There's got to be other options besides a six-story building. Crab, with inadequate parking. High density use of la land, going back to that issue. We need a home, but let's make it right. And remember how Oak Bay High School, the architects, they gave you alternatives. Have we seen any alternatives here? I think we should. Has there been a thorough, a thorough assessment addressing all the issues we have raised? Has there? I think the answer is a resounding no. When, whether you ask for balloons, models, alternative plans to reduce heights, the same answer, not enough time, despite the months, almost a year they've had. Well, Council, since they cannot find the time, then I suggest you give them the time. You tell them come back with the info, alternative plans, and consider community needs to, for you to make a sound decision. Help them out. Give them the time they need to do it right. The onus is upon the applicant to do it, to do their duty and for you to do your duty. And you've got to get the information. So I ask you, has the community had the opportunity to provide input into the nature of care? Has council and community been provided with information to assess the impact of the variances, including height, assess if there are other alternatives? Is council obliged to accept the one and only option presented? I caution you, council, before answering that. Don't be sidetracked by the rush of the applicant, how much money government has spent to date, as they noted last time, $100,000, and concerns about loss of financing. Focus on the relevant issues today. We all know when you are rushed and pushed, a bad decision usually results. Thank you. to get a clarification, Mr. Rankin, on your no, um, May 24th date, that you said that the municipality had been um, holding on to the plan since May 24th. I just want to clarify with Mr. Thomason, what is the application, what was the date of the application? Uh, it was sometime in May, however, it, it was being held uh, until there was a, an announcement of, uh, of, because there was, I believe we all needed to uh, there was a requirement that BHA give the notice to the people in the building that, that there's a one year time frame. So uh, before bringing it to council, uh, they asked to hold off until that time happened and then in August that's when that okay. we, we were told to. Mr. Thomas, I'd like, like to clarify that answer because uh, my understanding
came from what Mr. Bolton said the last two weeks ago was that no notice had been given, uh, no notice would be given until he was sure of the, of the path of this project. So, Rudy, do you, you want to comment on that, Mr. Bento? Yeah, we will. Could you use the microphone? Sorry. Yeah, in, in, in respect for both patients and, and people who work at the at Oak Bay. Um, yourself, oh, sorry. Rudy Vandenbrook, I'm with the uh, Chief Project Officer for the Vancouver Island Health Authority. Um, until we get um, final government approval, we will not provide it until everything's act absolutely all, all the approvals are in place and, and the province has approved the transaction. We will not be giving notice to folks because you're giving notice for people to, to basically have to move, and it's a, it's a significant event. We want to make sure everything's at 100%. Uh, so, so we've got, a, we've got a two different answers here. May 24th, so could you? I was asked to hold the application until uh, they did some kind of notification, whether it was could actually you? notifying the residents or so making a public announcement that the building was going forward, I don't know. But that they decided to hold the application until August. Okay, I just didn't want the record to show that it was being held by VIHA in order to give notice, because I don't think that was the case. So what was happening in that time, do you know? What day, I mean, I mean, I, I, it's Baptist Housing who is submitting the application, okay. essentially for a project that's funded by the uh, Vancouver Island Health Authority and the uh, Capital Regional Hospital District. Okay. But nevertheless, I believe that the plan was to keep, um, to, to it, while we were waiting for the province to give its final set of approvals, to keep as, as low a profile on the project as possible to not cause any false alarms or any unrest for again, patients and staff. Okay. okay. I, think, I think that the point that I was trying to make is that we did not hold on to the plans for May 24th and not allow them to be shown publicly. We had to hold on to them, on to them until Baptist Housing said now we want to put in the sure. application. That was the plan I was trying to make. Okay. And, and while we've got you up, and yes. I know you've got to go in 10 minutes, um, there was one question raised by a previous speaker, Mrs. Bender, about mobility on the fifth and sixth floors. And I know you've just been the project supervisor on the, the Jubilee Hospital. So could you, could you speak to that question about mobility on 5th and 6th floor? Well, I think any building that's above grade, that's, that's more than one story, there's always going to be um, a requirement if you want people to go out of doors to transport them through an elevator. Uh, these are folks who largely uh, have mobility impaired or somehow require assistance 24-7, usually nursing assistance. So anybody who's not on the first floor has to go through an elevator and down to grade, or, or perhaps if, in the, if, if the design allows it, have rooftop access. Having rooftop terraces actually creates a larger building because you have to step in the building. So in this case, I don't believe we have any rooftop terraces. So anyone who's second floor above, whether it's a four, six, seven, eight story, 20 story building, um, in this case, I believe it's a six story building, but whether it's a second or two or three story building, there's still those, those residents are gonna be going through an elevator to okay. uh, outdoor space. Perhaps we can have the number 320 addressed as well, because okay. I'm, I'm thinking that that seems to be a big concern to people. So can you Good. can you tell us once and for all where that number came from? So the 320 beds um, on this site are is designed to match the number of long-term care spaces we need. It's largely replacement value. We have, as you as you're probably well aware, an exit a stock across the regional district that is aging. Um, many of the buildings are 40, 30, 40, 50. Some. Uh, approaching 80 years old. So these are replacement beds and they're designed to replace the worst five, 550 to 580 bed stock that we have in our in our system. And, and so 260 has gone to Saanich, is that correct? Yes. And so I think that some of the questions that people are wondering is why did Saanich only get 260 and Obey has an expectation of 320? Mm -hmm. If you can answer that, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's, it's a buildability issue. Uh, I don't know. You want to take a stab at that one? The initially, it was, as I said last time, it was driven by the amount of funds that VA had in terms of how many beds could they afford. So in respect to that, um, we looked at densification at both sites. At the Mount View site, it's actually a seven-story building, so it's even higher than the one that's being proposed here. Also, at the Mount View height at the time and currently, there is an opportunity to add an additional 120 beds at that site. 
uh, but they do not, VIA at the present time does not have the funds to be able to do that. So actually that's where the numbers, when you add them all together, we exceed the 550 in total. And they would have liked to have built more, but they didn't have the operating funds to do so. Have a question to relate it. Let's stay on the same subject. Now. Well, okay. So I guess the question that we'd be asking is, um, I think I see your total quota you're trying to achieve, but why are we taking 320 and they're taking 260? They do have a capacity for an additional. What did you say in sandwich for another 120 yeah. possibly? So why don't we have 260 and give them 320? I mean, just to be simple. About it. They, they've indicated to us that there are more needs coming down the road in respect to uh, additional beds that are going to be needed in the, in the Capital Regional District. So it's a matter of looking at the sites, both sites, and doing what is maximum possible at both sites in terms of uh, from an economic point of view. So, so okay, you're I, mean, I understand what you're saying. If you're saying to me, if, um, why didn't we put 320 there first and do 260 here first, um, we would have then been saying that we would want to do a second phase here to be able to meet the, the requirements that that uh, VHA is indicating are needed for the region. Could we consider that? Um, at the present time, the properties at Mount View are zoned for the 260. Um, and so it would be difficult in terms of, it would be, it would be backtracking quite a bit in terms of the rezoning of the properties uh, because the 120 is a placeholder at the Mount View site and it is not currently zoned for the 120. The additional 120 at Mount View Heights is not currently zoned for the 120, it's a placeholder for that 120 as future name. So when you made application on Mount View, was it a rezoning or was it a like this, uh, just a, a variance? It was. It was uh, because of the, it was a school property. It required a full rezoning. Okay. <clears throat> and so what it was broken up into different pieces, of which the one building, which is similar in shape in terms of an H configuration, was the seven stories, which was two hundred and sixty. So, so yeah. just, <clears throat> just what would happen, like? Let's say the variance was not, the height variance was not, and the parking was not granted here. Could you still do it? With, uh, that would bring it down to, um, I don't know, three, uh, 280 or something. So I'm not quite sure what the number would be, but, but let's say you weren't and you had to go with, un, with without the variance. Could you still do it? And if not, why not? What we, <laughs> what we have put forward to Vancouver Island Health Authority uh, we have responded to their request in terms of what they said was the total bids that they needed replaced and what they wanted to replace. And so that, in the end, came to that 550 number. And in terms of then the two projects, it's a matter of this, these two projects are intertwined as one replacement, even though they are over two sites. So in that respect, what's happened here is all the financing is intertwined as well with the, the projects, even though each project does have its uniqueness in terms of uh, different requirements that were necessary. In Sandage it was a rezoning, and here it was the variances. So to, to start to change the model, because there's so many pieces here, would collapse the deal. And, and I don't know how else to say that. I'd like to say kinder, but it, it would collapse the deal because of the, the multiple pieces that have to fit together here and the the aspects of how the zoning and Mount View has fit together, how the numbers have fit together, um, it, it all is integrated. So, uh, so I, I'm trying to answer more specific, specific questions, mean, but it is integrated. But so yeah. Does collapse the deal though, does that mean you'd have to go back to the drawing board and revise it or does that mean it would just make it go away? Hmm. Um, I can't answer for VHA. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I can't answer for VHA from their perspective. When I say collapse, the deal from our perspective is we are working with restraints as we were asked uh, because I didn't try to volunteer it in the sense of my poker face was not very good that, that meeting two meetings ago that financing was an issue. 
and financing remains an issue in terms of being able to complete the deal on time because this is a major financing deal where uh, being a construction project of roughly $140 million, the financing's around uh, $80 million. And there are not a lot of placeholders of, of financing groups that would place that. Okay, I'm going to uh, like come back to questions later if you want. Um, um, Mr. Van Den Book, do you have anything else you, you want to add to this before you leave? Uh, cer certainly. I'd like to try and address, I think, the underlying question. And, and I suppose the question is, I think what I'm hearing is, can we lock two floors off and push them somewhere else? Um, Saanich site's already at seven stories, uh, which is the maximum allowed under the, the zoning for that site, if I have this correct. Um, um, and then there's this parcel beside it, which would take rezoning. The rezoning process, I don't know what it's like in Oak Bay, but is measured in six, eight, 12 months, depending on how you want to want to look at it. And then you intertwine that with the state of the financial markets and the, the fact that we do have this one lender agreeing to um, finance the $80 million of debt that, that's um, underlying this project. And I think that's what's, that's you're look, talking about a major delay on the Mount View site of a year, and it's basically ready to go whenever the all the approvals are in place. So it would just basically, the whole thing would have to be put on so a shelf so and revisited. You, and you say a decision here in Oak Bay affects a decision on the Mount View site? If, if the, the, as, as Howard said, these two projects are one financed $140 million package. And there are the subject of, you can imagine how many legal agreements in terms of funding and financing and operating agreements and leases and, and applications that are before the province of BC. If if this project, portion of the project, if you want to call it that, this, this particular piece can't go forward, then the whole thing will stop until it can be rebuilt from the ground up. And if that involves the years, or actually involves very much delay at all, then the financing will stop. And then it all has to be repriced and then get approvals again. So it is a very uh, intertwined, integrated project. Okay. Yes. Um, let's go back to the speakers, and if you have you have a chance to say one more thing. No, I, I just I just do urge you. Uh, this this is not um, this is a major capital investment. There are 580, I think the number is, um, people who are living in accommodations around the, the CRHD who could be in you know within a just a very short while, two or three years, living in much more appropriate, largely single room accommodation and right now they're not and I think I think the benefits to those patients and the staff but in terms of ceiling lifts and natural light and, and all of the pieces that go into a building of this design are very important benefits to the our parents my, my mom and dad for instance um, in this area okay thanks I, I'm sorry I just just have one more question because I know you're going to um, leave Mr. Vandenberg is I, I think I understand what you're saying about the financing. Though, I mean, if I had $80 million, I'd probably lend it to you because I think you're a probably pretty sure bet for paying the money back. But that said, um, do you have $80 million? I, not, not today. So, um, um, you're being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Okay. Um, but I guess I, I'm just wondering. I mean, if the, if the project went grander, I could see the, the issue. But if the pro project went less, in ter then it's not really a financing issue, right? If we, if we built fewer units here in Oak Bay, you, it would presumably cost less money. If, if we, could, we could build no units, it would cost a lot less money. But I mean, our issue is we have more, we have at least 580 beds worth of stock, old, old aging facilities that have that have mechanical, electrical, and structural issues, uh, like Oak Bay Lodge, and it, we we want to move forward to put those those patients and those staff in more appropriate accommodation, and so we could make it smaller. We could not proceed. We could delay. You know, defer. We could. You know, there's any number of accommodations that cost less. The challenge here is you. We're trying to get the biggest bang for the taxpayer's dollar, and you can, fronts, you can only take full floors off. So the current um, building is only 5.75 meters shorter than the proposed building. So that's what we're talking. We're talking about 18 feet or whatever it is in Imperial um, of increased height in order to, to, to basically maximize the value of that, that uh, piece of land and keep it in Oak Bay. 
and keep all those jobs and all those patients and all their all their family members in on that site. So we felt it was our duty to try and get the best possible configuration on the two sites we have in the time frame we had available, and we believe this represents that. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm going to uh, ask to go back to the speaking order, sir. Uh, your Worship, uh, councillors, thank you very much for having me I'm here. I'm sorry it was a crack in it. It's I, nothing, I, I hear it's it all the nothing time. nothing to do with jewellery or anything. No, so no, it's, it's me we're spitting, trying to fix at, it. spitting at the mic. Um, I have one comment to make before I go to what I've got written down. I went into the... Could you just uh, give me your name, sir? Sorry. Oh, Duncan Nixon, 1894 Hampshire Road. Thank you, Mr. Nixon. Uh, I went into engineering this morning and I asked for the plans for uh, Gary Oak Village and I was uh, met with blank stares. The Oak Bay Lodge, Gary Oak Village, seems to be confusing a lot of people. And I have a question for Mr. Cotter, if I could. If you could address it to me, then. OK. Yeah. Uh, on the representation that you just showed, he showed some large trees behind the Heritage House. I'm wondering if they are actually to scale. OK, I will. When we get, rather than interrupt all the time, I'll okay. try Because I have uh, evergreen trees in my backyard that are bigger than the oak trees in the neighborhood, and they don't seem to be showing up. Okay. Anyway, I'll put my glasses on and see why I, I can make my way through this. Thank you uh, for listening and promising changes, uh, uh, all of you who are involved. Uh, we now have the beginning of a dialogue. However, prior to October 3rd, there has been a lack of consultation We've had two open houses and one council meeting, which is more like information. But without a model, it's hard to grasp the scale. The plans I've seen are not readable due to reductions in size. Remember, it is the proponent's timeline that has led to a model, meaningful consul consultation, studies, and etc., not being done or possible. It doesn't help to say there's no time to get these things done when it's your timing. We are prepared to wait. I can appreciate there may be valid reasons for the rush, but the land is not going to disappear, the lodge is not going to fall down, and the residents of the lodge and the neighborhood would rather see the I's dotted and the T's crossed before we stop, rather than after. The Oak Bay Beach Hotel had many meetings with neighbors and council and made many, many changes before breaking ground. I sure wouldn't want to bet that too many people outside the Walker family is pleased at what is going on there now. The flyer simulation had me asking Mr. Cotter at the open house, what happened to Hampshire, the street that will be the most affected, especially those of us on the north side. As the owner of the second largest house backing onto the property, I provided Mr. Cotter with photos from the fourth floor as per Councillor Jensen's suggestion the day after. Have they been manipulated to show the building's new escalation or elevation? Without more consultation, a model, balloons for height, traffic studies, and et cetera, I believe council should cross their fingers, take a deep breath, and hope that Baptist Housing can find it in their heart to try and make this work for us. We do want this, but it's going to be there for 60 years. And if permitted, as proposed, will be the slippery slope that Oak Bay should not go down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nixon. Worship and Council Members, Leona Fernet, 1958 Hampshire Road. I will remind you I'm a 31-year resident of that hill. I worked at the Oak Bay Lodge. My granny was a daycare member there, and my mother lived there on respect purposes. This site means a lot to me. My property backs onto it, and having worked with people who live in old folks' homes, no one can really appreciate what they go through. So when I come here to speak against this project, it's not against having a home on that site for people in need. It's about having the right site for the neighborhood and the residents involved. This site proposes to put 320 beds for, a, for assisted living. If anybody needs to know, assisted living is, is people who are basically in their room 24-7. They get taken out or they can go out. But this is the last stop before you go into palliative care. No other site on Vancouver Island is being asked to provide 320 beds on one site. Vancouver Island Health Authority is responsible for all the beds on this island. And they want to put 
a site there. I, I don't I don't disagree with that. I just think this is the wrong site. We're going to be losing a campus of care. The whole idea of having daycare there, which is used by Oak Bay residents heavily, is a possibility according to Mr. Walbert. That care may be a, a, a available somewhere else within BHA, but not at this site necessarily. This process is just so compact and so quick that I agree with my, my neighbors have said earlier today, why are we under pressure to do this when this will have the single largest impact on our community for generations to come? I get quite upset when I start hearing people talk about pulling heartstrings. People need to understand that the people that go into this building are not necessarily Oak Bay residents. And yes, it's fabulous to have a facility like that in our community. But this component and BHA are not guaranteeing any of that. They're guaranteeing a structure, a time frame, and services provided to the residents of Vancouver Island Health Authority, which is Vancouver Island. So really, we need to detach. This is not a local Oak Bay issue. These beds are for all the citizens of Vancouver Island. Put it into perspective. If they can't get their funding, excuse me, on a $140 million project that is being funded by the CRHD and BHA and needs the permission of the province, anybody that's willing to line up and lend them $80 million is going to turn around and walk right now? Well, I work for the Ministry of Finance. That's gold-plated, absolutely gold-plated. You're going to get your money. What's at issue here now is the time frame is rolling out, and the costs are going up. And the costs are going up because we're building a building for the site that is too large. It's just too large. You know what? Viha owns property all throughout the Victoria area, and so does the Capital Regional House hospital district. We've been buying up properties for years specifically for this. We have a facility in Sydney which is also part of Vancouver Island Health Facility that's been built by another Baptist organization that has rooms ready to go right now and they're sitting <coughs> empty. I know for a fact, as I, I worked at B-Hall, that we can buy beds at any facility that B-Hall wants to, that they feel is accredited and is capable of giving the care. So to come into this municipality and say, we've got to do this and we've got to do it right now because we've got pressures, those pressures were created external to our municipality. And why do we need to be bear bearing it for the, the, re the whole Victoria region? Why? Because we have the best site in the city. You know, we all bought an Oak Bay, we buy an Oak Bay, and we, we ratchet down what we want in our properties. We forego amenities that other neighborhoods would provide us because we want this location. Sure they want this location. This is an expensive location to build on. There are other sites that are far more suitable for this type of facility. And let's build something there that fits the neighborhood, that gives us a campus of care, that isn't just a housing center for people who can't get out and enjoy Oak Bay. Do you think they're going to be able to get out and walk around the neighborhood? No. Are they going to be able to enjoy the vistas? No. I want you to think about this. This building is an acute care facility. They can pull those rooms apart, and the next thing you know, we've got full-on care in here. Don't get me wrong. I do want something done on that site, and I want it to be something that not just is a budget pressure for BHA, and is because the stars are lining up, they aren't lining up. The only people they're lining up for are Howard Waldner, his executive, his board, and Capital Regional District. And they put pressure on this little district to do what? To turn it over in 30 days. Oh, well, they will do it. It's a done deal. Let's get it done. Chris, you've done a fabulous job as mayor. And I have all the respect for what you've done for us and the devotion that you've made to this community. And I know how important this project is for you. I know the hours that you put on boards listening to people like me complain, complain, complain. Here we have an opportunity to do something. 
But an opportunity to do something and an opportunity to do something right are two entirely different legacies. Thank you. I live at 1839 Hampshire Road. Um, my property doesn't uh, back onto uh, the project site. However, uh, the increased height will in fact have a significant impact on uh, afternoon sunlight on my property. And of course, the, uh, the, the traffic issues also are of great concern to us. Council's heard tonight that the immediate neighbors support the continuation of seniors' care on the site of Oak Bay Lodge. The concerns and the objections raised here tonight cannot and must not be uh, seen as a not in my backyard response to this project. We in our neighborhood have lived amicably with Oak Bay Lodge and before that Oak Bay Manor for many, many years. The issues that you have heard tonight and will continue to hear from us are project size and, and planning process. Within the limitations of EHA's imposed density and Baptist Housing's chosen service delivery model, the architects have tried to address a number of concerns raised by adjacent neighbors. We thank them for their efforts in this regard. However, tinkering with the footprint is not enough. The most important and overriding issues remain resident capacity and building height, and these significant issues have not been addressed. The bottom line is that this project is too big for this location. This is a very challenging building site that already rises above the surrounding neighborhood, sitting as it does on a rock outcropping. To shoehorn a six-story complex onto this small lot will result in a permanent and inappropriate change to the Oak Bay skyline and significant change to the quality of life in our neighborhood. Oak Bay Council is being pressured to make decisions that neither respect the community's bylaws nor the variance application process. This pressure is coming from the private financing timeline of the developer. We ask the council not sacrifice the quality of life in our neighborhood or thoughtful planning under an implied threat to withdraw this project if the variances are not approved. We, the immediate and effective neighbors, believe that solutions can be found if BHA, Baptist Housing, the municipality, and the community work together to find a design, a density, and a service delivery model that meets the needs of our seniors, respects our bylaws, and our community, while leaving a rich, respectful legacy for our future. There is an obligation on public institutions to model good corporate behavior. Sadly, this is not always the reality faced by the public. Whether the policy decisions are for BC Hydro, ICBC, BC Ferries, uh, Community Living BC, VHA, or even the government itself, there's too often little or no consultation and an inflexible response to public input for change. This does not make for good public policy or sensitive planning decisions in the public interest. Oak Bay Council has an opportunity to put the horse back in front of the cart and to bring VHA, the developer, and the community together in meaningful consultation that will enhance understanding and bias this project for success. It's not just the surrounding neighbors who must be heard from, but the broader Oak Bay community. The service delivery model needs to be openly discussed with the community, not imposed on it. The impact of the building design needs to be fully understood by the broader community as well. Surely a six-story institution in the heart of a residential neighborhood should be of concern to everyone. It sets a significant precedent. Whose neighborhood would, might be next? We need only go as far as James Bay to see a radically different approach to building a senior's care facility. Beckley Farm Lodge versus James Bay Lodge. They are as different as chalk and cheese. One fits seamlessly into its neighborhood, and the other rises as a multi-story monument to insensitivity. Which would you want in your community? Speakers tonight have raised many questions that need to be answered by Viva and by Baptist Housing. 
questions that could have and should have been addressed through public consultation prior to design. Instead, Oakley Council is being told that density and service delivery are non-negotiable. That's wrong. And Council must be prepared to stand in defense of this neighborhood and its community. We ask that Council not approve the request for variances at this time. There is too much at stake. All we are asking is that Council find the resolve to respect and enforce the bylaws that protect our community and our quality of life, and that VIVA and Baptist Housing make the commitment of time and imagination to find solutions for a project which, put quite simply, is too big. Our neighborhood and this community will live with your decisions for 60, 70, 80, perhaps more years. Let's take the time to get it right. Uh, I'm Doug Mollard, uh, 2361 Cranmore. That's the ticket you can put on me. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Patrick for the work he's done as an architect. A uh, very sensitive, responsive approach. Uh, we live at the end of the driveway that looks right up, the, up at the uh, lodge, and uh, you've done a very nice job uh, listening to the concerns there and responding to those. Uh, with uh, Baptist Housing, I think we have very good people here that uh, the heart is in the right place, and uh, we know we have a caring developer, <coughs> no question at all. It's nice to see the uh, land being used for a uh, public, uh, public facility. And uh, to reiterate what other speakers have said, of course, uh, we all want quality care in our neighborhood. I mean, that's, that's a given. How do we get there? The one thing that's been uh, coming towards me is I've been thinking, well, what would it be like to live in this lodge or in the village? Because a uh, number of us in this room will probably be having that possibility. Although the, it's conceivable that one of us might be there and a spouse might be out in souk. And that's a little scary to think about. Having a little trouble getting input at this level, what would happen if you were uh, suffering from dementia, having a little bit of uh, trouble with speech, and you were having trouble using a phone and your wife lived in souk. So, you know, these are concerns that might come up further down the road. I would think with a, a good developer and a good team, they would probably resolve those things in our favor. But <coughs> these are concerns. Now, what I've been trying to get my head around is the 320. I live at the foot of this, and I'm, I'm trying to get a sense on how small is this lot. And uh, uh, looking at it, it's screened by trees. So I thought, well, what would be a comparison? I thought, well, maybe Windsor Park is something everybody's familiar with. How does this lot compare to Windsor Park? I w happen to be at Windsor Park, and it's about a fifth the size, a little less, and sort of shaped like a scone. So you've got a si you've got a piece of land that's a fifth the size of Windsor Park. You're putting on a six-story building. You think of the clubhouse there, that's two stories. Take that up six. And then what you're doing is you're covering a third of the lot with the building. The rest of the lot you're covering with 107 parking stalls. Some slid under the building, for sure. So you've got a fifth of Windsor Park, six-story building, 220, or 320 people, 50 staff, 80 staff, visitors, 500 people on a lot where you would basically, you could take a one iron or one wood and you could probably hit a ball across it, and a nine iron and, and chip across it sideways. And you've got 500 people living on this spot. So how do you do that? Uh, Patrick's got a very difficult problem. You have to go up. You have to pull back from all these neighbors that aren't happy. So we get six-story six towers. So then you think, well, okay, you're living on that tower, fifth, sixth floor. You want to hear a bird sing. You want to integrate with the green space. You want to go downstairs. You're in a community, which is nice. Who's going to take you down there? How long can you stay down with your book open? Feel a bit of a breeze in your cheek. Catch a little bit of the spring sun. You might be in that building for five years. Something that drew uh, my attention when I was looking at the design was the fish tanks. 
I think that you know if you can't get down to the green space, and there's not much there on a fifth of uh, Windsor Park with 107 parking spots, but if you did get down there and there's some green space, that would be good. But if you can't get down, we have the fish tank, and that's nice. It provides some life in the unit. But I thought in some ways the fish tank is a metaphor for the residents. They have to turn around and look out the windows of a great big six-story fish tank. They don't get to get out. They just get to look out. And you start thinking, well, what if you're a resident there and you have compromised mobility? Fifth story, even the third. And you smell a little smoke in the hallway. And the fire alarms start going off. And we've got how many people on at the Oak Bay Fire Department here? And they call in other people. Hopefully it's not an earthquake, right? Uh, it, within the school system, we get kids out in a minute, 20 seconds. How long is it going to take to get 320 uh, people that are compromised with mobility when you can't use the elevators and you're in a six-story building? So when I hear about a seven-story building in Saanich, I, I think, well, how is going up doing anything here? I would think seniors' care would be coming down, navigating maybe one set of stairways at the most, and letting people sit out where they can be supervised, and at least we can enjoy our outdoors and have a green space. So these kind of things come to me when I look at that design. I think, wonderful lot. How are we going to get it right, though, that so we'd want to be in there? And where's the dialogue and the discussion so that we can have that conversation and push back uh, on a bureaucrat in Viha who's put 320 on a lot? Why can't we push back on 320? Where'd that number come from? On a size of a lot, that's a fifth the size of Windsor Park. What are we trying to do here? If we're going to have a quality standard of care for everybody in the community, we have to figure out uh, how to have a conversation about that, what would it look like. It might be that it's very close to what we've got here, but a lot less dense. Maybe we won't need the variances. And I would point out that the existing building shouldn't be a gold standard because it's pushed up and it's got a lot of the same problems I raised. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. Thanks so much. Uh, <clears throat> looks like the last. You never know. I'll be quick. <laughs> uh, my name is James Chesson. I live in 1936 Hampshire. And um, I just, I had a letter written, but I don't think I'll read it. You've heard enough of those, I think. But, you know, there's a couple things. I, I see a lot of avoidance of the, of the core issues here. One is, it seems to me that every time there's a difficult question, we get one of two things. Either we're going to lose our financing, which is hard to, hard to stomach for me. Um, we've got, already got a huge pro project going out in Sanders, which they've been funded. It seems to me strange that you would get funding before a project before you had the variance for it in the first place. I don't think a government-backed project is a huge financial risk for most institutions. And banks make their money by lending money. So when times are tough, they're looking for customers as well. I, I just don't buy all that. Second of all, it's not our responsibility as a community or yours as a mayor and council uh, to solve financial issues of an applicant. You, the thing that you have before you is very simple. It's the variance and the effect on the community. You should not be taking into account whether or not they will or will not lose their financing if you don't rush this through. That's not what's on the table here. That is not what's on the table. That's not your responsibility. You do not secure financing for applicants. Second of all, although I understand there's an increase in some setbacks, uh, that's a bit of a red herring for me. If there's a towering building, uh, 30 feet, pardon me, 27 feet now, thank you for the change in height, 27 feet above the top of your house and you see no sunlight, if it's a few further feet back, although I appreciate it, you know, it doesn't necessarily address the real issue. The other thing that seems to come up every time there's a difficult question is, is the need for to take care of our elderly. I submit to you that uh, it's almost insulting to think that there are only two options here, to abandon our elderly or to approve this project as it stands. That's insulting. There's a third option, and the third option is, is that we can take care of our elderly and that we can create a project that fits the community. And um, they've had a lot of time to speak to neighbors 
which they chose not to take. The fact of the matter is that the onus, since we were not aware of this project, the onus clearly was on the applicant if they wanted to have a dialogue, and they chose not to. As I wrote in my letter, they actually had the audacity to suggest that the reason they didn't really come and get a perspective from the neighbors is because they didn't want to trespass, as if somehow they couldn't have made a phone call. So I, I really think that uh, the most important point to be made, points are two. One is we should not be taking into account the issue of financing for a variance. That that's, should be completely separate. Nor is it your responsibility to, to counsel an applicant on how they should apply for or uh, secure financing based on whether or not they get approval. That is insignificant. The second one is this, is that we have an opportunity here uh, to have to, to create a third option. And that third option is to take care of our elderly uh, as we should, and we are morally obligated to do, in my opinion. And to also take care of the neighborhood, which the variances and, the, uh, and are set in place to do, and I believe it's also our moral obligation to take into consideration the neighborhood. And we, we don't, it doesn't have to be one or the other. It could be one and the other. The only thing we need is a little bit more time. I must say this, that I have become quite optimistic about option three. In a few short days, the architect who told me last week that it was not possible to move any further back uh, at all, has now come back with a plan that has moved back some. So if you can imagine that we've accomplished these changes, these positive changes in three or four days, imagine what we could do if we went through the process properly. Uh, the sky's the limit. We can get it right. And there's no need to rush. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the lady is next. My name is Maggie Hayes, and I live at the corner of Cranmore and Hampshire. Uh, I just with, have with the gentleman who just spoke called Hayes as well? Oh, yeah, almost 40 years. I'm oh. patient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's patient? <laughs> we take turns. Okay. Um, I have a couple of quick things to say. One is that it distressed me this evening to hear that uh, developers and, and Open Municipality were talking together in May and uh, everything was to be kept secret and only some months later were we uh, invited uh, into some kind of uh, seeing what was proposed rather than... I, I, I just to uh, correct you, I, I, I didn't hear the staff say they were keeping it in secret. They had been asked to hold it, to not to bring it forward. Uh, Isn't that the same thing? No, it's not because it's a public document. It's never been dealt with in camera. Oh, okay. Well, so, no, the, we weren't the, step, the, the applicant had asked the staff, that's why I asked for the clarification. Right. The applicant had asked the staff not to bring it forward to this public meeting. That was no instructions to Baptist Housing. They couldn't hold meetings or anything like that. It was just at that stage it was sitting on someone's desk, oh, not someone. brought forward. Okay. It was and a, and that, that does happen. Yeah. It, yeah. It was, it was not, some delay before it was not we in got secret. to hear about it. Was not in secret. Okay. <clears throat> The second thing is I appreciate that since last week there have been changes made. I, I very much approve of the uh, Cabra Bay entrance and exit, the kitchen being moved, uh, a better aspect for Cranmore. Um, it is all just still too high. This particular foot does not fit this particular shoe. Uh, it needs to be, so I want, something I thought about uh, now, listening when they were talking about the knoll, uh, I don't see anything totally magical about the knoll, and if it were possible to, uh, to level that in some way and reduce the height of the building, I wonder if that has been uh, considered or it should be considered. Um, the last thing I'd say is, I would like council to really think twice about any variances or anything to uh, to do amendments to the community plan in such a hurry. 
and it's kind of at, it feels like it's at developer demand, and I hope that you take a breath, then we can all consult more upon this and find something that we're all going to be happier with and live with. 60 years is, is stunning to me. That's my grandchildren, my little grandchildren, looking at some kind of facility, and I don't want to be visiting them on the sixth floor of anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jim Kirk, I live in Theatre Lane. Um, I would like to just make a comment about perspective. Um, you know, in urban living, six stories is not very high. Uh, let's uh, look here at other cities, other urban development, uh, what happens. The other issue that people are focusing on uh, at infinitum is density. You know, the babies are born, the people are there, you have to densify. It's time to grow up. What's more, there must be an economy of scale here. That is to say, if you remove 40 beds, you still have to have the same kitchen, you have to have the same access, you have to have the same elevators, you have to have the same stuff, and I kind of doubt that the building is going to shrink all that much. We could ask the architect if that's the case. That, you know, the other issue on parking, the hundred residents don't drive cars. There is no parking issue. So, uh, you know, I think people are afraid. I think the site is handled really rather beautifully. Um, I'm not totally convinced about the financing pressure. However, if you've ever had to get financing, that kind of money is not easy, even for a government. So, um, and if I lived on Hampshire Street, maybe I wouldn't see it that way. But when you don't live on Hampshire Street and you step back as a part member of the larger community, you say, wait a minute, is this just a storm in a teacup? Okay, thank you, Mr. Cook. Uh, next speaker. I, uh, I'm uh, Paul Merner, 1882 Hampshire Road. I, uh, I don't have prepared remarks and I wasn't going to speak, but uh, I, um, I think that there's a couple of things that, uh, that might need to be said here uh, towards the end of this, uh, uh, all of this. Um, one is that, I mean, I think that the, the benefits that we are about to see from this development, uh, I think you have to look at the scale of the, of the benefit in uh, versus the, the scale of the detriment to the neighborhood. And to simply um, add uh, 40 uh, additional beds uh, for, uh, for the impact of doubling the, the, the height of this building, I think it's, it's just all out of scale with, uh, uh, with the benefit. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a public organization. I think that uh, public organizations should be held to a higher standard and not, not a lesser standard. I think that uh, public organizations should be the last to receive variances uh, that are contrary to the, to the, uh, to the normal public interest. Um, uh, in, in terms, uh, just one last comment in terms of parking. I know it's kind of random, but uh, most public organizations these days are moving away from increasing the number of parking uh, uh, stalls on, on, their, uh, on their premises. Call it for one is uh, moving to reducing the amount of vehicular traffic and uh, going from uh, uh, whatever it is, 67 to 107. Uh, it seems to me to be going in uh, exactly the wrong direction in this community. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much. Anyone else like to address council? Good evening. My name is Jessica Van Der Wiener. I live at 2465 Amiota Street. Um, I just uh, wanted to reiterate a couple of things that I said to Council before, but I think they're important. And one of them is that I'm delighted that the land is going to remain in public hands. That was my primary objective coming into this. And the second one is uh, to make yet another plea for the campus of Caramonal. 
And I'm, I'm also curious, because I think there's some confusion between the definition of an assisted living bed, a residential care bed, and a dementia care bed. And um, I'd like to ask that you ask uh, for clarification on the numbers of each kind of bed. I think at root what we have here is a problem because capital funding for public health has been frozen since 2002. So we get these incredibly convoluted financing situations with obviously very decent and honorable people trying to work to make something work where the funding has been frozen since 2002. And it makes for this kind of camel rather than a horse thing being built. So again, the, the issue of the campus of care is the care model that we should be keeping in Obey. We should be keeping the adult day center on the property. It keeps so many people out of expensive care when they go to adult care. And it keeps their spouses, who are often exhausted from taking care of them, from breaking down their own health. We need to keep independent living on the premises for the same reason. When people stay in independent living, they often just don't deteriorate. They do like my mom, and they cruise along at 94 and a half, and hopefully, she says, one day she just won't wake up. And she never will have had a poor quality of life, because she went in soon enough to be stable in her final years, and she's loving it. Um, and I think also that the whole thing about the campus of care model is the compassion of keeping couples together and keeping people rooted in their own communities. And I'd also like if you would ask Biha, because there was something mentioned um, last week about a possibility of reinstituting um, the adult day center and some independent living beds back into the project which would keep couples together. Thank you. Oh, good evening. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, um, people. I'm Rachel Burnett. I live on 1958 Hampshire Road. I would just like to go back to the variance. Um, to me, what I'm hearing is that finances are being put before my family's livelihood and my neighbor's livelihood. At the end of the day, these gentlemen go home to their homes and we're stuck with a six-story building behind our home. I felt that we were communicated to and no one ever came around to our house to ask what we thought on the project and how they could integrate this project into our community. I'm only 20, I don't have several years of education behind me, but I do know that I have morals. And if I were to be part of this project, I would to make sure that I have community involved. And um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your opinion. Okay. Do you want to speak another time, sir? Okay. Oh, I'll give you a break. No, 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 because once I close it off, uh, I'm going to leave it up to I think members people, of council to I make their own arguments. I think people have spoken more. Good, thanks very much. Um, so maybe we could ask the, uh, the applicant to address some of those questions that came up. I noticed you're taking notes. Um, if, if, if you want to cover them, if you miss one, I'll try and just insert it, okay? <laughs> I think what I'll do is I'll, there's three main things that I can speak to. I'm happy to answer any specific questions, but the three main things, um, I think tonight some new questions around questioning the quality of care or the quality of the care environment um, as it relates to the six-story building height. And, um, and I think um, I, can, I can say based on the evidence-based design that this building was, is, is founded on, that this model of care um, represents kind of the, uh, the best practices in providing care in an environment like this. Uh, so all of the thinking that's gone into the resident neighborhoods of 20 and how they're staffed and, and even that, that population size, if it gets too much larger than the staff to, to resident ratio um, is, 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 not, is compromised. Um, about how do people live comfortably uh, in a group of 10 people or 20 or 30. And there, there is very good evidence around why this particular model of care is, is accepted worldwide across North America in all of the new institutions that are being built. 
are moving away from an institutional model to a household model. So embedded in that, uh, the design of the building is very much a commitment to the highest level and quality of care uh, that can be provided. And there is a direct relationship between the shape and design of that built environment and the wellness of residents. And um, so just to take that one step further, the questions around um, life safety in a six-story building. Um, really, if one looks at how these buildings are constructed, they're non-combustible construction, they're built of the highest quality uh, of construction we have, which is a reinforced concrete building. Um, they, uh, whether residents are on the second or the sixth floor, still have to use the vertical circulation in the building in the same manner. And uh, there is very much an attempt to provide both uh, through the daily life cycle of a resident within their neighborhood and then the life uh, experience within the entire facility where there are opportunities for residents who can be uh, and are mobile to be brought down for, for common events down in the, in the multi-purpose room, uh, for walks through the garden uh, where they're uh, brought down to experience all that the, the entire building has to offer. But there's a full range of experiences that this building will accommodate for residents, whether it's in their rooms, in their neighborhoods, or within all of the amenities that the grounds and the building provides as a whole. Um, and there is in no way a compromise to the life safety of any residents because of the building height. The way that these buildings are tended to in an event, um, the buildings are compartmentalized. So there is a fire compartment on each floor that separates it into three separate segments. Uh, buildings uh, with residents uh, in residential care are not evacuated. They are moved to a compartment of the building that is secured and is locked down, and that is the way that the fire response happens, and the building is designed to provide the life safety requirements that are mandated in the building code. Um, so it's not as simple as, gee, how do I get everybody out of the building? Only in a very rare situation uh, would you ever do a full building evacuation. And I think the fire department can probably speak uh, in more detail um, into their fire response to a, a building of this type. But I can say that the building is designed with the current best practices, that the building is designed to be of the highest quality of care environment, and that in no way the building height uh, compromises the life safety of any of the residents or staff that, that are in the building. Well, uh, while you're talking about the quality of care, I, I'm quite confused about something. My understanding is the current Oak Bay Lodge is what we used to call extended care, 100%. Is it not? <laughs> Am I correct? No. So, so is this a different line of questioning? Well, I, I, he's talking about the best level of care, and I, I want to be sure I understand the what. They now change the name from extended care, and they call it what, complex care or something. Residential care. Yes. Yep. OK, why don't, why don't we come back to that question? Okay. Okay. I think it's more for our Walnut. Okay. Sorry. Howard Howard Johnson, Johnson. Um, than it is for Mr. Carter as an architect. Okay. Um, I guess the, the second is the relationship of the existing building to the proposed building. And I think there's a peculiarity in the fact, as one of the speakers had mentioned, that the existing building already does not conform to the zoning on the site. So it exceeds its site coverage and it exceeds its height. And what we need to, to provide by way of comparison um, the mathematical calculation for the height variance that we're asking for is one thing, but the relative difference between the existing building uh, is 5.47 meters, or 17.9 feet. So in fact, what and on a reduced footprint. So the current building occupies 36% of the site. This building will, com will occupy 29.5%, and it will be 17.9 feet taller. Now, I, I say this with all due respect to the neighbors. We are not in any way suggesting that this does not have any impact on them. We, we fully recognize that it does, and that's why we've gone to the extent that we have to try to mitigate that impact. But the relative increase in height from the existing building to the proposed is 5.47 meters. So I think it's important to have that in context, as many have suggested that it would be helpful to kind of visualize. Uh, and I think that's probably the best representation. So if you think about the, the comments about the overall impact, not only on the immediate neighbors, but on 
uh, the broader community in that surrounding neighborhood. Um, it is not too much taller than the highest point in this room. Uh, probably another another one, 30% more than the height of this room, is the overall impact. And put that in context of what you see on the existing building. That's the extent of the proposed uh, additional height. So that's uh, those are the points that I wanted to address that relate to the design. And I'm happy to have Howard address the other comments. Uh, can you, there was one yes. other question if I could just pick up on it. Um, a gentleman had asked um, with respect to the the, mo the model uh, presentation with the, with the trees to scale. Do you remember that question? Yeah. I, so what we have is um, we have a survey document that locates all of the trees in plan. So we know where they are on the site, but they have not individually been surveyed as to their their height. So what we've been trying to do is approximate them from, from street photographs and from aerial photographs. So we do not have exact surveyed heights of all of those trees. Um, but we have tried to represent them as best we can from the photographic information that we have. Big question on that particular point. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Carter, I was just wondering if you could explain why, it, um, why you couldn't, um, if you took the top two levels off down to four, and let's just say hypothetically, you were allowed to get more site coverage than what you have right now, 29.5%. Let's say that would happen, okay? So why couldn't the building work that way? Do you, do you follow what I'm saying? So you kind of bring it down and spread it out more instead to get your bids that you're trying to achieve here. Is that possible? If it's not, why not? There's two, two responses to that. One has to do with the physical context of the site. So uh, I think there was a suggestion that we should, you know, we could look at taking the knoll down and, and actually extending the building onto that portion of the site. Um, that was something that we kind of, uh, you know, considered as being something that would be worth preserving because it acts as a buffer between the existing residents and the building. So we made a decision not to use that part of the site. And yes, that has uh, resulted in some of the, the increase in height being concentrated on the smaller footprint. We also looked at trying to observe as much of the existing bylaw as possible and bury as little of it as possible. So we took the site coverage uh, and tried to get the building down under that. Now those are physical responses to the site. But there's a more fundamental impact on the design of the, of the building relative to the kind of uh, care environment that we were speaking of. And if one looks at the resident neighborhoods of 20, there is a range of resident population size relative to staff that creates the ideal model for this household model. And if one takes those as the basic building blocks of, of the site, the site can really accommodate three of those neighborhoods on one level. There isn't enough site area physically to accommodate a fourth. Um, and uh, so the only other way to increase the footprint and to redistribute space would be to extend the wings of the building in some way. Um, so where we've been trying to pull them back, one would be, uh, you would be suggesting that we add room. So instead of uh, wings of eight or 12, they might grow to 14 or 16. But then the resident neighborhood size goes from 20 to 30, and the staffing ratios and the quality of that environment um, begin to be uh, significantly compromised. So, um, so the short answer there, even though it's long, is that um, that ideal size of 20 uh, would be compromised, and then we would be moving back towards a more institutional model. And that is exactly what's on the site now, long corridors, with lots of rooms in no particular clustering or grouping into households served by a major common um, central services. That's an institutional model where you could live and, you know, on the northeast wing and be four, and a, four wings or corridors away from a common area. Or, so it's, a, it's just a totally different philosophy about how the building and its components come together. So to redistribute it horizontally would really severely impact the, the basic building block of the household model. Okay, go ahead. Um, it, um, if you were given a variance, how many beds could 
could you accommodate right now? Um, I, you know, I, I actually can't answer that question. Uh, we haven't looked at that. Um, but one, what I am suspicious of is that the existing building right now is at 38.25 meters in height. Our average grade is 20.10. Add the 10.7 meters of permitted building height on this site, that only gets you up to 30.8 meters. So the existing building, I highly suspect, is also in excess of the height permitted on the site. So I think for us to come back and not require a variance of some kind uh, would mean that we would probably be not matching the existing, but providing a lot less than the existing building is providing on the site. But you can't give an order of magnitude. I haven't done the calculation, but I suspect that we would end up with 30% less building than is currently there. Okay. Okay. And I'm glad you answered that question uh, about expanding the footprint, because I've heard it from lots of people that that could solve the problem, but uh, in your opinion it doesn't. And I think I'd just like to add one more comment. Um, I appreciate the, the, the few thank yous that we've had from, from the neighbors about the efforts that we've undertaken to date. Um, but just in speaking to um, our commitment to public process, um, we very much take into consideration all the comments that we hear and we have from from the outset been saying that we will continue to do that throughout the evolution of the design of this project. We know that, that this particular uh, care provider uh, is committed to uh, a public information and outreach program throughout the course of the design and uh, we would look forward to ongoing consultation with the neighbours as well. Um, and it was not our intention to not engage the community. Uh, it's uh, in hindsight the way that the timeline has unfolded with approvals from various levels of government. We did have our application into the district uh, in late May, um, but through a series of events of awaiting approval from higher levels of government before we could go public or we could come and represent the council, there were protocols that we had to follow in terms of waiting for different levels of government to, to provide uh, approval to proceed. So we're not saying that you know, it was other people that held us back, but it is the way that the project has unfolded. Um, and though it has left us with a short timeline, um, our application, which was made in May, we received the go-ahead to go public and to come to council in the beginning of August. We did that, uh, came to, to council in August, there was no quorum, we came back again. So in fact, we have, you know, we have, uh, We've had not the ideal consultation process, but we have tried to accommodate within our framework um, the consultation and outreach that we've been able to, to accommodate in our, in our timing. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. And we, and just to take some of the responsibility, we, we did not have a quorum in August, so you had to come back and re present in September. <coughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Baptist Housing. Uh, has received a number of compliments tonight and I appreciate them very much and I think it's in part because we see ourselves as a neighbor and we have been a part in the fabric of Oak Bay now for some 30 years with Marion Village and more recently with Shannon Oaks on the site. <coughs> so in that respect we do take seriously the, the concerns that neighbors have expressed and I do believe that we have tried to act prudently as a neighbor and how a neighbor would want to act with another neighbor. And so in, in that respect, I won't reiterate what, what Patrick has said, but in regards to what we want to bring to Oak Bay, we have given it careful consideration. Going back to the beginning of the RFP process that we have entered into, the RFP indicated that the property would be sold. And in essence, we actually had to submit an option that, in essence, we would buy the property. But we also put in another option, and an option in terms of trying to look at how can, how can this remain in the public hands. And it wasn't until we were named as a preferred proponent of the RFP process that, in essence, we were able to engage the dialogue and bring in the aspect of how this could be made public property would be because we are a nonprofit, we can engage and work with the Capital Regional District in terms of that ownership of the land and retain the land in 
uh, public domain. And so uh, we did that because we believed that was the right thing as a neighbor in Oak Bay, that that was the best way of going about it as opposed to having ownership. So I, I just wanted to, to bring that into context, that not only in terms of the land ownership, but even in terms of the quality of care. Baptist Housing has been providing care in the province uh, for over 30, 35 years. So we, we understand what's involved in, in care for seniors. And in that regard, even similar to our uh, uh, Shannon Oaks that we developed, we spent a lot of time researching that. We've spent 10 years when we started researching how to replace a central care home in Mount Edwards Court. That information that we gained through that research, which Patrick just alluded to in terms of some of the evidence-based design information, we have applied to these projects. Furthermore, we've taken our experiences of around the province and said, what makes good care? That has driven us to the conclusion in terms of, well, what is the footprint of this building? What does it look like? What are the neighborhoods? What's contained within those neighborhoods? How do we make them as residential feeling as possible? How do we get away from institutional feeling? How do we deal with those that suffer from dementia? How can we make areas within that neighborhood safe and secure and that they would be friendly to the resident so that the, renting, re, the resident who may be a wanderer doesn't come to dead end quarters but has a sense of direction by, by creating features in the, in the facility that would allow them to naturally curve around uh, when they come to a, an end of a hall. So there's a lot of detail that's gone into this in respect to that. And um, I have no question that it would be state-of-the-art in terms of the quality of care that would be offered. In terms of responding to John's question in terms of trying to understand care levels, there's no question that things have evolved over time. Initially, uh, facilities 30 years ago had personal care. And then it eventually went to intermediate care, one, two, and three. And then you had extended care, which was like Mount St. Mary's had extended care and it was considered hospital-like. Today, what's happened is, as care levels have increased for seniors, the government has realized they have had to change the terminology to respect that and respond to that. And so the terminology today, as you indicated, is complex care, which means that um, you could be managing uh, uh, levels right up to that extended level of care, which is the highest level short of being in acute care. No question about that in terms of it's a high level. In response to that, though, that drives what the building looks like or how it's designed. And that's why, in essence, there, there is more features involved in the neighborhood in terms of there is the issues of, of private rooms, there is the issue of lifts in every room and the capacity and capability. There is the issues of how do you bathe residents in a, in a, in a uh, dignified way within the in the recognizing their constraints in terms of mobility. So all those things go into play in respect to that, and they all drive, at the end of the day, a certain staffing pattern in respect to that. So VHA has been very careful with us, and it's taken a very long time in a process of negotiation in terms of working at this to try to get to that sweet spot from an economical point of view of trying to design the building and also staff the building such that it would be able to give them the best opportunity to maximize their, their, their ability to add uh, care units throughout the province. So that, that's the intent of that. Now, I maybe should just pause and... Is that Council of Hoots? Well, I, 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 the existing Oak Bay Lodge was some years ago an extended care facility. I can't answer that specifically. I don't know if there's somebody well, I here. I've heard questions about what level of care are we going to have. I heard somebody mention the assisted living. I don't think there's any assisted living in it. No. So it's basically going to be all what you're now calling complex care. What's going to be provided is... Except for the, 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 the dementia. Correct. There'd be two levels that are provided. Licensed uh, dementia housing, which is uh, an early form of dementia where people need secure housing. Uh, however, they cannot find that um, provision of care in an assisted living facility. So it's a level above that.
but and the reason for the licensed dementia housing is to put them in, put those those uh, dementia patients into a neighborhood. Uh, the evidence has shown that if they're in a similar environment of other people with similar health needs, they actually retain their independence longer. Whereas currently, uh, those people are currently entering the system and going right into complex care. And what's being found is that immediately the person suffering from dementia just immediately deteriorates to the level of those around. So coming to the other part, which is complex care, mm -hmm. in order for somebody to pass the test to go into complex care, can you just describe briefly, I mean, my understanding was they probably suffered from a lack of mobility. They had, they had certain difficulties. They weren't, probably many of them aren't going to want to go outside. Am I correct or not correct? I mean, I guess there's a, a range. There is a range. My understanding is they were people that required a fairly high level of care. They do. And that's measured today in hours of care. And so the hours of care is approximately three hours per resident per day is the standard. That's today. Whereas back when we had intermediate care, it was about 1.5. So the care levels have doubled in the period of time. In terms of answering your question in terms of the desire to, to be out into fresh air and so forth, uh, we didn't get into all the details here tonight, but on each floor there is a space where residents can actually go on to a deck area, uh, which is right at the center inside part of the H, uh, where they can actually go outside on each floor and get fresh air. So that is that ability is there on each floor, but I'm not going to pretend that that's the same as being on the first floor where you can have a whole car guard. No, but basically uh, that's complex care and dementia. That's that's that's. That's the sum total of what's going to be in this. That's what is being proposed. Yeah. There is not being any independent living being proposed. Hopefully, the, the, uh, the, the day, the yes. day stuff, if you, get, if you get approval. Sure. And, and to speak, so there is no independent living being proposed. And to my knowledge, uh, the health authority doesn't have the ability to fund into that. As I understood, just to clarify what Howard Wallner said, he has a commitment to those independent living residents that are currently there to assist them to remain within this community and that that's where VHA sees an obligation to assist with that. In terms of the adult day services, uh, because of the nature of the property in terms of the sloping nature, we did have a space where in essence we are able to replicate the adult day services. VHA is aware of that, um, however at the present time they indicated they did not have an ability through the RFP process to address that at the moment. I don't know what their processes are and their approval processes uh, in respect to that, but we, we recognize that that's something we feel is, is needed and is currently within the building. And so we're certainly advocating that that be retained on the site. And I think uh, Howard Waldner commented that uh, if it could be worked out, then he would like to see it as well. Um, the last thing. The last thing that I might mention in terms of, I, I, don't, I don't see this as solely a finance issue. There's many, many pieces, as I say, that come into this. And when you get into uh, a, a, a complex deal like this, where in essence you have the aspect of being able to close the deal, where, where we have capital regional district that's going to take ownership of the land, that has to happen too, also at the same time, concurrently. As, as to being able to have your financing in place. So there's more, more to it in terms of what has to fall into place. And yet if, if this can't move forward in a way where in essence it looks like it is a probability, then in essence there wouldn't, there is unlikely to be a transfer because the, it's part of the deal in terms of what happens. So and others may be able to speak better to that, but my point in, in expressing that is, is to say it's not all about financing. Financing is just one piece of it that we're faced with in a reality. And as you can appreciate, this is taking a long period of time from the day they announced us as a preferred proponent to today, of which we've had to try to hold down the aspect of what the charges would be from a financing point of view. And there has been slippage where it's gone up. Uh, it's a reality. We do fortunately have an environment that's quite friendly in terms of interest rate at the present time. But, but it has cost as time's gone on, and that's the reality.
Okay, I've got a question from Councillor Braithwaite. Um, just going on the funding, um, what happens if you have a demolition permit in hand? Can you get your funding? Can I get my, if I have a demolition permit in hand? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. So, yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Thompson, but you can give a demolition permit at any time, is that correct? Uh, they've made an application. I, I think it, yes, uh, it could be issued just about any time. Uh, okay, so just bear with me for a yeah. second. If you're given your demolition permit, your funding stays in place? Uh, no. What, okay, no, it doesn't. I just answered yes a second ago. So. Uh, I said I can get my, it's, it's a piece that's necessary from a funding perspective, but it's, uh, it's not the only piece that's necessary. Um, and that's where, in essence, um, we have to be able to demonstrate that we can actually do a building. And to be able to demonstrate that you can actually do a building is not the same as having a demolition permit. A demolition permit is a part of it in terms of demonstrating that you're moving forward towards uh, building something on the site. But in terms of uh, if we cannot obtain a height variance, whether it's today or any other time, uh, we're not going to be able to get the financing. And there's, there's a unique piece about the financing. We're not doing it in a conventional way. It's being done that we're able to secure the financing up front and they actually put the entire amount in escrow. And so it locks it in right up front and it locks the interest rate for a long term. And that's all part of the pieces that are working here. And so to get that financing, I need to be able to have, demonstrate that we can actually do a building, which does mean uh, the variances, and does mean being able to get a demolition demolition permit. Okay, just, does that help? Uh, well, it does. I'm just, I'm just surprised because a lot of times that the um, funding will be based on just the demolition permit alone just to show that you're actually going ahead with the building. And I just thought that might be a good solution yeah. for so, a lot of people if you were just able to get your demolition right. permit and so carry on the conversation. Yeah, so why I'm trying to express that this is unique financing is that the financing is all provided up front, whereas in typical conventional financing, you make draws during your construction and then have a takeout mortgage at the end of it. This is quite different, so there needs to be the commitments up front that in fact something is going to happen here, or else we can't get this attractive financing. Okay. Is that helping? Okay, you have one more question? Well, I do. I mean, obviously the basic question that is floating around this room is, is, uh, is should this be, if this project was delayed for let's say a month or whatever it is, could some improvements or some changes be made? And the height is the principal issue. Now, I've heard tonight that the height variance is 17.5 feet. Is that right? 17.5 feet higher than from, the existing building? Not, not the variance, from the existing building. From the existing building. So I, I guess my question to you is, what do you see could happen if we delayed it, if we said, let's, let's hold our breath, find a way to say, have more public consultation for 30 days or 20 days or whatever it is. What other things can be done? I'm just now. I've heard that there is dilemma with the number of beds at, at in Saanich, and uh, 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 you know I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I'm just saying what what actually can be done. We can certainly have a lot more meetings with the neighbors and maybe make the neighbors more aware of the height. And I'm not necessarily saying that's what I support or don't support. I'm just trying to, we can dance around the problem all we want, but that basically seems to be the problem that people think it's a bit too high. I, I must admit, I think back to sitting in this room when Carlton House was being built, that many of the neighbors felt the world was going to end if the building that high was built. And when I park behind it now, you can hardly notice it. So it, it, it disappears into the sunset after it's built, but right. that's a sign. Let me see if I can answer that question. It's a difficult one. I, I think I'm going to relay back to what Patrick has shared already. We have tried to look at that question from the perspective of with the existing site, the existing shape of the site, the topography of the site, is there any way of reducing the height and still retaining 
the number of beds that we've been asked to provide. And we think we have exhausted all the ways that that could be done. And uh, we don't think it's possible to simply take a, and place three neighborhoods stacked on the site uh, if we were to level the site because you can't create your connections in terms of into the common areas. So we've, we've looked at that and tried to play with models by pushing them around as little paper pieces on, on, on the site. Um, Patrick's also spoken to the aspect of what research has shown and, and the difficulty of, of having large neighborhoods in this design. And so we certainly would not recommend going down that path because it would not be advantageous of providing good quality care. So that would certainly be difficult. Uh, I don't know of other options um, of how to retain that on the site. I, I, incidentally, I'm not suggesting you haven't worked very, very hard, yeah. and I, I, I certainly agree. Okay. If there's no more questions, um, is, is that a complete response by the applicants? Yes. This covers the points I made, so okay. So I, it's now up to uh, Council to uh, decide what you want to do with this. Council Dent? Just a procedural issue, Mr. Mayor. Um, we have a whole bunch of other items on the agenda. Which we have to get to? And we also have an in-camera meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we've heard a lot tonight, uh, things that uh, may need some further clarification and, uh, and reflection. So I, uh, is the idea to try to make a decision tonight, but would there not be a value in perhaps coming back next Monday? Uh, and Remember that your decision tonight is whether to, um, and after all this input from the neighbors, uh, it, it may, may seem almost ironic that we're doing it this way, but the next step is to decide whether there's enough merit in this proposal to send out notification to the neighbors. This is, this is not a rezoning. This is a variance request. So we have to now, we, we've, done, we've done this, this is unusual. But the next step normally would be just a notice on, on the agenda saying, do you want to notify the neighbors for them to come back and in two weeks' time? I have no doubt at all there'll be, there'll be similar, similar things coming back. But that is what you're deciding tonight. You're not deciding uh, yes or no on this particular application unless you think either you want to delay it further or you think there's not enough public merit in this proposal to actually continue down that process. So that's your choices tonight. You can actually delay it if you choose to, which means you put it off to the next committee meeting, which means you couldn't, you couldn't actually recommend to yourselves until then the 28th of October, or if that's the last... No, it's not. It's... Uh, sorry, sorry, 24th. So, so you 24th, which you would then give notice, which would then come back on the 15th of November. So uh, that still works within the timeline that you mentioned at the last meeting, Mr. Johnson, which was December the 15th, but I know uh, that even pushes the timeline out. So those are your options. So uh, you can speak to one or the other. Who would like to go first? Because we do have to move on. <laughs> well, um, never easy. It's never easy. No. I, um, I, I, I also would like to compliment uh, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Connor. You've been uh, a pleasure really to work with over the last few weeks, and um, I, I found you very responsive to um, everything we've uh, spoken with you. You've been upfront, uh, you've been cooperative, and you've actually been quite creative in my view. So I, I really appreciate this. Um, for me, I, 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 I've been on the properties of, of the residents adjacent to this property, and I've looked at the plans here. It's too high it, for me. It's just too high. 
and I don't think it, it fits with this community. It feels like this whole process has been one of where the tail has been wagging the dog, and I question this number. And I, I think you guys have done everything you can to make this work. I've asked you all the questions. I, I, I'm, I find you, what you're saying to me about why you can't bring the height down, why you can't spread it out across the property, um, um, given, given the concept you're trying to work with, compelling. I, so, I, I mean, you've answered my question. I, I think the problem is with the number of un, um, beds that we've been asked to accommodate on this property. And so I'm asking myself, like, I, what the person I'd like to have in the room here is Viha, who's assigned this number of beds to us uh, to accommodate. In, in fairness, in fairness, I must point out, yeah. just for the record, there was someone from VDB here. Yeah. And we did have an opportunity to ask some questions. Yeah, okay, we, so. we did ask them. <laughs> but my, what I'm what I what I'm meaning to say there actually, yeah, Mr. Vanderbrook was here, and we did ask him some questions. But it seems to me that is the place that we need to be negotiating because we can't negotiate with you anymore. I don't think that the the plan can move anymore, given what you've said. But I'm still not like it's not. I'm not convinced that we have to accommodate this 320 bed unit. I, I, I don't under, I really don't understand. I've heard the numbers what Saanich is doing. I, you know, we're willing to do a certain number, but in a way the 320 is a quota that's been imposed on us that is irrelevant to this site. It doesn't fit this site, and in a sense it's an arbitrary number. Um, for us, it's not to them, but it is for us because it doesn't fit the, the, the property. So I don't know how it would happen, but I, I'm sure the residents would like to see a couple of floors off. But in my view, we it needs at minimum one of those levels taken down. So I'm having difficulty with uh, the application right now. and. I, as it stands now, am not able to um, uh, to, to, to um, move this forward. Okay. Okay. Councilor Desmond. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Um, it's, it's a difficult decision. Uh, on the one hand, you have a very significant benefit to the larger community. Uh, on the other hand, you have a significant burden uh, on the, the neighbors. Uh, and um, I, I have to ask myself, uh, because I, I see people on both sides of this as very caring, uh, honorable, uh, and compassionate, uh, and uh, diligent. Certainly, uh, Mr. Howard Johnson is uh, to be complimented for for his tenacity in, in putting this together and having the best interests of seniors at heart. And, uh, and uh, they're a wonderful architect. On the other hand, uh, the neighbors, I think, are, uh, I heard, I think it was Mr. Hayes that said, this isn't about Indianism. This is just about getting the right project uh, for that place. And, I, and uh, certainly the neighbors are caring. They want a project of this nature in, uh, in that area. So why are we at an impasse, I ask myself. If we have uh, well-meaning and honorable, caring people on both sides of this, how did we get here? I think we got to this point because the process has not been all that good. And I hear that from the neighbors. It's been rushed. Um, they, um, it's really only had it since August, let's say. Um, there's a feeling of urgency because of, uh, to some extent, an artificial deadline of, uh, of December. Uh, there's many unanswered questions. Uh, we were expecting a traffic study, for instance. We don't have that. Uh, there was the issue of a model. We don't have that. Uh, so, and, and there's, I mean, the, the speakers from the neighborhood have uh, articulated quite a number of uh, issues and, and questions that they have. And some of them, for the first time tonight, we got a bit of a dialogue going earlier uh, with uh, uh, Councillor Ney and uh, one of the proponents. And I think that's what's been missing in all of this. There has not been a dialogue and a two-way discussion between the neighbors and the proponents. 
And what we've had is a presentation of uh, the plans and, and then a kind of a Q&A. But there hasn't really been an exchange of ideas. I am very hopeful that there can still be such an opportunity. And the reason I'm hopeful is that what uh, I think it was Dr. Chestnut that pointed it out, look what's happened in the last week and how much this uh, project has been able to change in the last week. There may have been a sense at one time that this is a given, this is the only project we can have, the one we saw, uh, or, let's say, 10 days ago. But now it's quite different. So I am uh, quite confident if there is a continuing dialogue, uh, we might be able to get a project which everybody can live with because of the fact that we have such uh, a um, well-meaning people on both sides. So I don't think it's ready to go. Mr. Mary asked if there was if there was one of the options. I don't think I'm, I, certainly I am not ready uh, to, to vote in favor of this without that dialogue, meaningful, uh, transparent, being in place. So that's where I stand. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Other members of council? Um, I don't want to see us lose this project. I think it's very, very important to the community. I have, uh, I have watched uh, Baptist Housing work on, other, on another project in Oak Bay, and I found it very honorable and hardworking. I, I must admit there's still some things that really confuse me about this project. We, we hear about this enormous parking variance. I assume the, the 327 parking places that somebody says we need is our our standard parking provision, which we have for anything that happens in Oak Bay, which frankly is never, never meant. It's just a number, and it's uh, so I, I, I have difficulty with that. I'm also confused, in all honesty, about the traffic problem. And, and to that end, I would echo Councilor Jensen. There's going to be a traffic study, and I think we need that traffic study. We have <coughs> virtually as many patients in that building now, conceivably even more staff because they're not in little pods. And so we add 40 people. Uh, the food truck is going to put six more boxes in. The bread truck's going to put a little more in. I don't think there's going to be that much more service traffic coming from back and forth from this building. So I'm not sure that the traffic problems that are happening on Hampshire are going to be necessarily made worse from this. If you ask me, are there traffic problems on Hampshire, I would say, yes, there are. And we've been hearing about that at council in the last few weeks. There's an awful lot of people use that as a shortcut, come down Cabaret Bay Road, cut down to Hampshire, head off to the village. And I agree with you, there's traffic problems. But I'm, not, I'm having difficulty understanding that this particular uh, facility is going to dramatically change that. Uh, I'm assuming the traffic study is underway the, uh, I, I kind of got the impression from people that there was some suggestion we were hiding this issue from the public, and that's certainly the last thing that I thought we were doing. Uh, we had, unfortunately, one meeting where we didn't have a quorum. Uh, at the end of when we're ready to go, the first next thing we do is we refer it to all, all, the, uh, all the neighbors again, and we have talked once about making sure it was a broader coverage and just, I think, the, the rule is everybody within 100 feet or 200 feet or something like that, and we thought that's probably not that's adequate. The, um, uh, my understanding from, uh, from Howard Johnson is that uh, if we were to delay this for, uh, for another committee meeting and then a council meeting, we would still be within the time frame that's acceptable to you. Is that correct? Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think about that first. You think about that, okay. So, I mean, that given the case, I mean, the other alternative is for us to send it forward for public, for public uh, Distribution mm -hmm. and that gives us a, that gives us public period. notification. And that how long does that hold on? Two weeks. So there's two weeks time there if we if we needed the time. But I think this is a very important project for Oak Bay for all of Oak Bay. 
I recognize that it's not nice if you live next door to it. Um, I suppose my own comment is, if you live next door to the village, you may expect the village to change. I know that's not a very happy thing to say, but it's like somebody asking me, uh, it's like me complaining about when all, everybody goes to Willow's Beach in the summer that I can hardly get out of my driveway for all the cars park. I knew it was there, I knew this might happen, and I, I don't complain about it. So uh, I, I think the answer is that if we can do this without upsetting the apple cart, <coughs> Uh, I would uh, I would follow Councilor Jensen's suggestion, but during that delay, during that period of time, I would like to see uh, a further commitment from from Baptist to to spend some more time with the with the with the residents, go over the traffic plan, answer any questions they've got, and make sure they have some more input. Explain to them why, in your view, it can't be put it can't be spread out bigger on the on the lot. Uh, you've explained it here tonight. It's probably better that people look at it and see it and understand it. Those are my comments. So can I just understand? Like there was no, there was no, there was a, there was discussion uh, about whether this should be delayed till next week. That was not a motion. No. Um, and when I heard Councillor Nay talking, that you didn't even indicate that. You wanted to delay till next week. You, you actually spoke against the proposal as it is. Councillor Jensen, I think you thought there could be some massaging. Uh, Councillor Herbert, I, I heard the same kind of thing just now. So I need I need to understand where uh, council is going on this. Is it is it to a delay of one week? Is it to bring it back in two weeks? Is it you want two more weeks to think about it and to ask the applicant to make any changes? I, I'm, I'm, asking, I'm unclear. Well, if you're asking me, I'm saying delay it to, you know, we'll have another committee meeting in, 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 in a week, in a week, I guess. So, so what is it you wish? Uh, well, I'm saying to provide some more time for some more review with the neighbors, to allow the neighbors to go over all the further questions that have been asked, to say, can the Baptist Housing explain to the neighbors why it can't be built up, why it can't be bigger? Okay, so do you, are, you, are you saying then you want to make a motion then to delay this for one week? You were asking me, Mr. Mayor. Well, no, I was okay. asking okay. Councillor Hubbard because he made the last comments. Uh, I'm saying uh, it sounds to me like the neighbors feel they have not had enough consultation. So uh, it strikes me that if there's a way of achieving that without losing this project, I would be in support of that. Okay, okay. Chelsea Jensen. But I haven't quite heard of it. My thinking is, and, and you know what, I'm not going to suggest that the, the process has been flawed. I think the process has followed a very traditional route, and I think that process itself is one that needs to be re-examined. But I heard, for instance, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Bender talk about real concentration, uh, consultation, too many on so the could you, could you, sorry. So I I'm mean, thinking that it's not just going to be a week, because okay. I think uh, there, there needs to be uh, a process discussed with the neighbors. Does it need to be facilitated? Uh, will it look like a design charrette uh, process so, so to be given into that? So not just having to go back and talk for uh, in, in a room. Uh, I think it really needs to be thought out carefully so how this consultation should take place. So and that might take a month. So you're actually asking, although we have no motion, you're actually asking for this to be delayed, which means basically you want to table any further discussion until something comes back. Absolutely. But there's nothing to table yeah. because there's no resolution. No. Okay, so that's what your position is. I understand your position, Councillor Nay. Councillor Hope. Well, I said, subject to what I hear, Baptist housing. If this is a critical issue, then maybe we need to find a way to expedite what Councilor Jensen has just said. Okay. Councilor Braithwaite, I'm going to try and pull this together some way. I wish you could get your funding on your demolition um, permit. That would have really solved a lot of problems. Um, this is such a difficult issue. I mean, obviously, we have so much um, um, input from the community. Um, I agree that Baptist Housing, I, I think that what you guys went away with after last week and came back with, um, to me, looked very, very good on paper. Um, you listened to all of the concerns that we had as far as 
um, where the kitchen was located, moving it over on the site, um, and um, fixing the Cranmore exit and putting both um, entrance and exit on, onto Cabernet Road. So I'm really torn, I, I have to be honest. It's, it's a very difficult position to be put in. And it's, I mean, I, I don't want to see losing this, um, this project out of this community. I think that um, as far as the 320 bed goes, beds go, you know what, if that's what we need to accommodate within our community for the greater good of, the, of the Vancouver Island, then really that's what we should be looking at is, is, is accommodating those 320 beds. There's other places where they have accommodation. City of Victoria accommodates a hospital for use of us in Oak Bay. So to, to me to raise the beds from 260, which is what it is at now I believe, to 320 is not a huge difference. Is there a difference in the height of the building? Absolutely. It's going from four stories to six stories, so 17.4 feet as we've heard. I, I think that when we listened to the residents last week when we heard about the height issues because it was so close to the houses, and we asked for Baptist Housing to try and do something about that, and you did, to me that was a, a great thing because it took it away from those, the, the back, the, especially the, um, the Heritage House. I, I, I don't know whether if we have a conversation about increasing the footprint on that site and, and keeping, because my assumption would be that you would probably have to still keep the site to about four stories if you increase the footprint. Um, if you're bringing that footprint closer to those houses, is that any better than moving the footprint away and going higher? And, and I don't know the answer to that. Um, so it's it's a confusing issue. If there was time to go away and and have another, another conversation, I would be okay with that. But I think for the for the good that this is going to bring into the community, I think we seriously need to look at this application um, and perhaps push it forward to um, get more consultation. If we approve it tonight, I think that everybody needs to understand that if it goes through tonight, then that gives two weeks for more input to come in, and then we sit around and we have a discussion. It doesn't mean that it's approved if we push it forward to the next step tonight. It just goes to the next step before the approval. So I think that's really important for people to know as well. Okay, so I, you are on another plane um, so now I've got four members of council on different planes. Um, and I'm not sure I can He's follow this. air traffic controller. No, I'm not, sure I, I'm not sure I can follow this together because um, the deal. Uh, do you want to make any comments? Uh, I was uh, not available on a recent phone call with four lawyers or three lawyers in the various parties, so that's why I hesitated there. But I understand by conferring with Bob that the timetable that uh, has been set for trying to do the closing is, in fact, November 10th. So it is tight. I think the 10th could be adjusted. Uh, it's very close to the 14th, so I don't think that 10th or 14th makes that difference. But that was then working backwards in, term in terms of having to deal with being able to, to make everything fit legally and financially draw it down before the end of the year. Okay. So there's chance. But but you know, um, okay. So I don't I don't know if that uh, allows me to bring any consensus on this I was at all. Just answering the question. Yeah, I know. And uh, I've got I've got someone who wants just to to do a lot more consulting. One person is not happy unless it's brought down. One person would like to take it forward in two weeks, and one person who wants to delay it. Is that? I wasn't. Because you were in, I was in. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you weren't with Councillor Jensen's that much time. What I said was, if if it wasn't going to foul up the process, because I don't want to see us lose this facility, then I would be happy to see it delayed for a few weeks if it's necessary. If we vote today to send it ahead to go out for public notice, yeah. that doesn't mean we've approved it. it no, no, it doesn't. It means we've got two weeks. That's right. The neighbors will all come back in two weeks and tell us the same story. In the meantime, hopefully, with any luck, Baptist Housing would 
since they're a very good natured bunch of people. Spend some more time with the neighbors. Is that possible? Yes. And go through, I mean, one of the things probably the neighbors like to see was, okay, you told me that you can't lower it and get it all to fit by filling up the site a little more. Yeah. Maybe they need to see that on a piece of paper, and, and maybe they need to see a bunch of other questions. And maybe I think we need to have some honest dialogue about that, sir. So, no, it's, this is a discussion between uh, council well, members. I, I, I'm not sure if you're suggesting that the Baptists have been other than honest, because I would object to that. No, I don't want to get into that. But uh, uh, the, the, the issue is that, you know, we, if we go that way, we have two weeks, we're still on track. At the end of that two-week period, there's no, no rule that says we have to vote yes. There is no time. rule that says you have to vote so yes. I've heard, from, I've heard from Baptists that they're still under a very tight time frame, so I would support moving ahead and giving it the two weeks. Okay. So, Councilman. Mr. Mayor, I, I, just, I do have concerns if this is just an information meeting that's being proposed, like a one-way, this is what we're going to do, this is how it looks, rather than a conversation where we're still open to what this final result might look like. Okay, so, so what, what, what is difficult here, just so everyone understands, what's difficult here is that staff have to send out a notice that says what the variances are. The variances can't change from the time those notices are sent out till two weeks' time it comes back. So that's what I'm struggling with here, is that um, I'm, I'm required through your offices to instruct staff to send that out. If they send it out and say the setback from the front is required variance of 14 feet, and the neighbors and the Baptist house get together and work on that and come up with 15 feet, that invalidates, in my opinion, it, that would invalidate the notice legally. So that's why you, you, you really have to say, Within that footprint, and I think, and I think, the, and I'm aware, uh, I'm aware of the time, that the Baptist houses have made huge changes, I believe, to what we saw two weeks ago, and I think they should be thanked for doing that. And I think they probably can do more stuff in the time frame, but something that won't change is the building can't come back towards the neighbors. We can't look at moving it now back from. The road. You can actually move it back from the road, but you can't move it closer to the road. So you can't increase the variance. So that's what would be going out in a notice. The parking would stay the same. Basically, what's been put on the table tonight has to go out. Otherwise, if there's going to be more discussion, you want to open it up more, then you should vote to delay it until another time. And who knows whether you're going to be dealing with the same project or not. I think that's basically what we're, we're talking about. I think if we want a meaningful dialogue, though, Mr. Mayor, I, I think for us to provisionally approve this, I think we kind of undermine that sense that there is there is going to be a discussion, and it's going to be a two-way, and and it is going to be collaborative problem solving. So uh, I, I, I'm, I would be very loath to approve this with a two-week period. Because when we come back in two weeks, it really is a similar forum. It's not a forum where you actually have uh, an exchange of ideas. And so I, I would be loath to approve it tonight if we want. One of the things that we could possibly do is put a rule until next week, ask the parties between now and next week to get together and come back to us with a plan for consultation. What would be the timeline? What would be the forum? How would that work? We have some very articulate and insightful neighbors I'm sure they can make time between now and next week to work on that. And we have something concrete in terms of timeline and what the process would look like. Mm, okay. What, What's your wish? I need, a, I need a motion. Well, what that is basically saying is we don't accept the timeline uh, for the financing that the Baptists have said. And, uh, and they're saying it has to be done to this time frame. I have no idea whether uh, whether it can be as flexible or not. I think Howard has said it can be moved a little bit. I don't know what a little bit is. Uh, I, I, I'm reluctant to play poker on getting this facility in Oak Bay because I think it's a very important facility. I also think, I, I realize it's a high building, 17 and a half feet is not enormous, 
it's higher than it is, but it's not huge. And uh, sorry, Art, you're about to say something. Uh, uh, just trying to be very clear in terms of the the timeline that the lawyers looked at. Uh, being November 10th, I don't think it makes much difference between the 10th and the 14th. So in terms of the schedule that you articulated, it sounds like it is possible to delay the decision for another week, have more consultation, and still potentially have it resolved at the 14th. Is well, that, we, would, we, would, we would certainly have to have a special meeting. Um, uh, and that this would have to be the only thing on the agenda. In fact, we'd have to uh, probably um, have that council meeting after the committee of a whole meeting next week, uh, so that then you can actually put notice out, uh, and we might even have to have a special meeting two weeks after that in order to meet your timetable with a decision yeah. for or against. Yes. Um, you know, if you put the timetable out there, you, you have to see what happens here. Right. So uh, I'm willing to work to that timetable. Uh, you know, timelines focus the mind. Okay, and and this is one of those occasions where everyone's working to a timeline, and everyone needs to focus on it. So uh, I I don't think spinning this out months and months and months necessarily will give you a better product. So um, if that's the motion to 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 to, to uh, put this over to next Monday, at which time we'll, we'll have to make a decision whether to go out or not. You'll come back, you'll either come back with a change plan or exactly the same plan, and council then's going to have to make a decision. Is that okay? That's not quite the motion I'll put, but let me try to fashion a motion. Okay. Well, can I just oh, ask you sure. a question? Sure. If, if, if we do that, I'm speaking to, if we do that, are, are the Baptists prepared to spend more time with the community and, and, and answer the further questions they have? Is that something you can do during the next week? I mean, not much sense as delaying it well, if that's not going to happen. Um, you're, 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 asking, you're asking the architect. No. Well, he was pushed <laughs> forward. <laughs> you generally ask the client. Um, I, I was the one that had, had to meet the timelines. Yeah. Um, and my Could question is a point of, uh, of clarification on our part that if um, you were suggesting scheduling some special meetings, um, we know from the, the amendment of the application last week that we had to have all of our amendments in the Thursday afternoon to make right. it onto the agenda the Friday morning. So the referral of one week, um, in order to have further consultation, it would be very difficult to fit that in Correct. Um, between tonight and the Thursday. Thursday. So have the consultation come up with the response, summarize it, get back into yeah. style. Okay, so why don't we, why don't we, uh, yeah, you're right, you're right, it's a Tuesday today as well. So can we, can we do this? Can we, can we put it off until the 24th? I think it's the 24th, the 10th, the 17th, 24th, 24th of October. And then we can decide on the 24th of October, and then that would come to a special council meeting first week in November, which is the 7th of November. Is that too tight? And then, I'm sorry, and where did you go from there? 14 days notice then? Uh, no, no, sorry, no, it, 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 it goes to, sorry, it goes to the 24th. We, we do this all over again yeah. with some changes, maybe. Okay, okay, and, and those are transferred to staff at uh, about the 20th of October, which is the Thursday. And then we discuss that. We decide whether to post notice to the, to, the, to the neighborhood. We send it out on the 24th, and we hold a special council meeting uh, at the same time as a committee meeting on the first Monday in November, which is the 7th. Shaking your head. I don't have a calendar in front of me. I'm doing this all from my head. We have a calendar in front of us. Okay. Um, if what I understand is if council is to defer this to come back on the 24th, yeah. we'd be in much the same situation as we are tonight. Notification would have to go out. Um, so those plans would come back. They'd have to come back the Thursday, the 20th, at the latest to be on the 24th agenda. We would have to send out public notification no later than 
October 27th to be considered by council on October 14th for no, no, I was actually thinking, because uh, that's too late, but you're, so the, November 14th, yes, no, 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 we would hold a special council meeting on November the 7th, which is a committee of the whole meeting, and we would insert another meeting on top of that. I need um, 10 days notice to send, okay. Okay. or 10 days to have a notice out. What notice? Neighborhood notice. Neighborhood okay, so give me the earliest date. So what is the final approval date we're working back from? November 10th. For consideration of the 14th. 14th, okay. So if if they are uh, comfortable with having a final decision made on the 14th, we can follow the existing council schedule by having everything brought back on the 24th of October. Uh, if council decides to send notice, we'd send it out on the 27th of October. And that would be finally considered by council on the 14th of November. Okay, does that fit you? It, there's no leeway. No, it, I mean, I mean, yep. you, you, it, get, you get a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yep. It's like, uh, what, what's that, uh, Gladiator? <laughs> and, and, by, and by doing that, and by doing that, my understanding is that one of you two will work to organize some community, some more community involvement, is that correct? Because otherwise we're kind of wasting our time doing this. Uh, but, so but I don't, I don't want to- Point of order here. Uh, who would organize the community involvement and structure it so that it is open dialogue? It's uh, and it, and I, 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 it'd be very nice for uh, Baptist Housing to do that, and they have, but some of the neighbors might like to have some control of that process. Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure yes. between- And Viha have to be there. Yeah, needs to be there. Yeah, I, I'm sure between good people, uh, a process can be worked out, and we're all mature. We can all work these things out. Everyone's heard the the uh, the input. Uh, we're working here to a very tight deadline, uh, and I think I th no. If if you want to take the risk, that's fine. Uh, but I think I think we have an obligation to try and work towards what looks like a predetermined deadline. I didn't put the deadline out there. Someone's brought it, we either ignore it or we work to it. And Mr. Mayor, as we have done numerously, numerous times when we have difficult issues that sometimes require coordination, I'm sure they can call you if it isn't being coordinated appropriately and you will assist. Well, <laughs> my very first project, my very first project in this municipality was the sewage treatment plant. Uh, there's no connection. There's no connection. But there was, uh, that was probably the most difficult issue I ever dealt with uh, down on Curry Road. So uh, if I, if, Mr. Mr. John, yes. if, if you need me to help you, I'm, I'm more than willing to uh, act as a kind of facilitator in this at all. But I, I remain neutral when I do that. Okay. Mr. Yeah. I, I do think that it is important that uh, a representative of BHA attends the consultation. I, I think those they need to be in the room. Okay. The gentleman, gentleman who was here tonight, uh, many of you didn't know him. He was actually the project site manager for the new Jubilee Hospital. And he's probably one of the best design build guys, I think, in the province. And that building that he was responsible for got the award for the best institutional building in the world so in, in that category so uh, I will ask him to attend I, but I think the person in the room needs to be somebody who can speak to the 320 member uh, that's my sense of it and we, that's been noted okay okay I'm gonna I, I don't have a motion do I? I I made I made that up as I went along but I, I can't make a motion, so I need someone to make that motion. All I can do is move what he said. <laughs> okay, so uh, everyone understands the timeline? Okay, stand. We need to understand the motion to the Yeah. Um, so. Can I just interrupt Please. for one second? Yeah. Just looking at the calendar, that would follow the current <coughs> council meeting schedule that we have for fifth Monday. It is possible to have a special meeting to, and still get the notice out for November 7th. So there is, um, there is the time.
time frame available if the applicants came forward on the 24th of October, sent out the notice on the 27th. There is the possibility of considering um, final approval on the 7th, but you'd have to schedule a special meeting for that. That's what I was saying. Committee. So you've got your fifth Monday in there. So but it just wouldn't be the regular schedule, but there is that possibility. That's what I was suggesting, but I thought you said there wasn't enough clearance well, on the just, days. I just re-added all the days. Out. Okay. Sometimes I am right. Gosh, it's nice to go out and think sometimes right. Okay. So the motion, in, in essence, is then to uh, have this back on the agenda two weeks tonight uh, for consideration. In the meantime, the... Um, uh, the proponent will meet with the neighbors and uh, create a forum for a dialogue. Um, is, that, that's, is that the motion? Yep, sure. Go ahead. I would second that motion. Appreciate your indulgence. No, that's fine. Um, if I, what I just heard there expressed was there, there might be a leeway of a week. There is. Um, I would rather us spend more time with the community and actually spend two weeks with the community and come up with the best plan possible. Okay. As opposed to having, you know, work towards that 7th of November. Okay. And do it on the 14th. Uh, I think it, it'll, it'll work, it'll become a better plan than, than rushing it in, in a short period here. Okay. But does that mean, though, in terms of what Monday we're going through? The, the <laughs> we're, we're going back to the original thought process. No, we're not going to the south. We're going to the 14th. Okay. Okay. So, so we stay the same with the 24th. Uh, all, all. Uh, uh, you see, you see, week. you see the trouble with what you just said. And I'm sorry about this. And I know it's getting late. The trouble with what you just said is what going back to what I said 15 minutes ago. Once you make, once you send notice out, you can't change it. So you still, the, the deadline, it doesn't matter whether it's the 7th or the 14th. Your drop dead date actually for changes is the 20th. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because you can't change the plan. That's the notice. That's the 24th. Okay, we can actually change them on the 24th. What you give to council has to be provided on the 20th. We can actually change on the fly on the 24th. Mm -hmm. But once we send the notice out, we can't change it. Okay? That's fine. Okay, I think we've got the motion. I'm going to ask for approval of that. Mr. Brennan, you had some concern? I didn't have a, I didn't know who moved the motion. Yeah. Councillor Herbert moved it. Councillor Jensen seconded it. I believe. Okay. All those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. That's what we'll do. I'm going to take... Uh, uh, just, I, just before we leave, though, could, could uh, we ask that the neighbors come, uh, perhaps report back to council next no next week, so we know that things are on track and we know that we're going to be able to get that. No, I, I, it could be meaningful dialogue, because otherwise we uh, you know we might come to the 24th and realize that uh, this isn't going to work time wise. Look, I. I, I put I put faith in people. I put trust in people. That this is this is going to happen. There's clear direction. That this is this is required. There's clear direction by nods that it's going to happen. If it didn't happen, I would expect someone to phone a member of council or phone a mayor, and I would take the appropriate action to make sure it happens. But you do not have to come back and report back. You're not. That's not acceptable. Okay. So. Uh, we have to move on the agenda, and we've got about 18 things still to do, okay? And we have two minutes to do it. Guys. What do we need so, um, could I get a motion to go to 11.30? Well, those in favor? Country, motion carries. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the first item we've dealt with, which is 314. <laughs> And 314.1, could I get a motion to receive those? Uh, those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. Item 10. Uh, oh, Bay Community Initiatives Committee. There are two sets of minutes here for the Community Initiatives Committee. One is from July the 13th meeting, 
and in it you'll notice a highlighted issue regarding uh, approving uh, two thousand dollars towards the uh, uh, towards the, uh, the uh, thing that is proposed for Ratcliffe Lane. Uh, the, uh, I think I brought a previous set of minutes to council to deal with thousand dollars, which is located there. So. I would, in a minute, move that one. But the second item is we. The second item deals with the active transportation plan. It has been uh, received by the committee, and the committee decided they wanted to present it to council, so council could receive it. And the council and the community initiatives committee requested that council refer it back to the committee uh, on the understanding that we have the permission to ask the engineering staff to review and comment on the feasibility of the recommendations, that we use staff resources to assist with costing it, that we prioritize the recommendations, that we investigate funding opportunities, and we have the, and that the, the uh, that we, uh, council agreed to put the active transportation plan on the municipal website. So I would move approval of those items. Let's have an omnibus approval. <laughs> An omnibus approval. Right. Can we take it in, uh, can I get a time? Can I get a second of to, to receive the minutes and approve the $2,000? Okay. All right, if you wish, I move approval of the minutes of July the 13th, including the expenditure of 2000 That is not to be separate. No. Do you want to do a question on that? Um, can I just interrupt for a moment? Typically, the minutes would be received, and then if there's any recommendations in there that council wants to particularly uh, take action on, they would make a separate resolution to do that. Um, for the resolution regarding the $2,000 towards the, um, the project that's laid out there for the, uh, down at the end of Radcliffe Lane, um, I don't know if there's been specific approval for that project and for the work that they want to do at the end of Radcliffe Lane, so any resolution could include that at the same time if that's to be contemplated. So my motion regarding those minutes and proofs, which uh, includes uh, <coughs> is that. So, so essentially, the, the first motion is to receive the minutes. Okay, I second that. All right. And then we get the phone off. So then you want a separate motion? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any questions? Those in favor? Yeah. Contrary motion. Okay. I uh, haven't looked at the clock lately. And the second motion is. Yes, I have, because we already passed. Is to authorize the uh, the expenditure of two thousand dollars on. Okay. I second that. Is that sufficient? I take it myself. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, just to put a bit of a spanner in it, um, the the actual location may be changing. I understand that, and if it changes, we obviously won't spend the two thousand dollars on that plane. Um, <laughs> no, because um, what, what does does council want? This project come back if it changes. Yes, I think it should. Okay. Okay. The parameters yeah. change. Okay. To the reason for this is the mayor is leading me out to some strange place. No, I'm not. Someone else. Is. The garden Someone path. Out. The garden path. Yeah. The path down the river. Okay. So that's been moved, I believe. Second it. Okay. All those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Okay. And the next mm -hmm. item is the uh, is the uh, active transportation plan, which uh, uh, I. Uh, it has been received by the committee. The committee chose to refer it to council for, first of all, for receipt, and secondly, to do the various things referred to in that memo to, to uh, direct, uh, direct it back to the community initiatives committee to, uh, and, and approve having engineering staff assist with the feasibility review, have the staff assist with the costing, advise the committee to prioritize the recommendation, investigate funding opportunities, and, and the council would agree to have it put on the municipal website. And I move all of those things. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Contrary, motion carries. Councilor Jensen, could you just um, chair the next item, please? This is the Heritage uh, Committee uh, uh, minutes that we have of uh, June 21st, and we also have another one of uh, June, uh, September 20th. So let's take them one at a time. Um, and uh, uh, move approval of the June 21st uh, minutes. Second. Any discussions or anything that rises from these? Uh, 
Yes, um, I had planned to bring that report to the uh, next council meeting, so that will be in two weeks. Okay, thank you. Um, there are some members of the Heritage Committee, I don't know if they wanted to address it, because they should have asked that the first time. I didn't see anyone rushing to the microphone or having their hands up. Yep. Could I ask a question? Yeah, sure, come on oh. forward to the microphone and state your name, please. And, uh, uh, Pat Wilson, if this report is coming to the next council meeting. Where is the give and take in the discussion? Normally, it's a committee of the whole where there's a discussion, isn't it? Mm. Well, typically, what, what would happen, it would come to council, and we would receive it, okay. and then we would move it to the committee of the whole, where is that the open discussion? Thank you. So, uh, typically, it comes to council first. Okay. With uh, items like that. And, and that's to make sure that we're going to move on. Thanks for the question. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. None voting. <laughs> Who's got a single hand up? Anyways, I take that. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, we move on to uh, item uh, 13, and that's to do with the Open Heritage Committee trial, Highland Lighthouse, and a, uh, a report there with respect to. Uh, federal designation of heritage status. Again, it's a number of people who signed it there. Um, and um, any questions about that? Is this going to invite uh, uh, staff then to, uh, to assist with, uh, uh, with any work? Or, or is, that, is there an expectation? Is there any expectation then that uh, it would be uh, engage our staff in any way? Uh, my name is Gwen Yu and I'm on the foundation. Um, there is no work for the staff okay. to do. Uh, we have done the preliminary work. Um, this is basically an information item for the council. Um, with your blessings, I will send it onwards now to the Heritage White House Protection Act folk, and then they do the research. Now, staff, do we have to approve that it be sent on on our behalf, or how does that? Uh well, thank you. I'm, I'm not familiar with, with the process, but from the, the work that, that uh, the committee has done, I, I understand that, that um, council endorsement is not required. Is that correct? That's correct. But you were so kind as to give it to us, I believe, with the initiative of Pam Copley, and, and so we wanted to bring it back to you. Right. Okay. So, uh, so, go ahead. We. Uh, did you like to go from here, or do you want me just to Sure, no, no, I'll, I'll take over any time. Trial Island? There's no dear, dear to my heart? Yeah. There's no motions on the uh, floor on this one. Okay, so, Councillor Copley? Um, that is correct. There's no requirement that Council endorse this, um, and that the uh, committee has uh, uh, certainly understood, understood the process correctly. All that's required is 25 signatures and a nomination package. And uh, there is an information session on lighthouses coming up next Saturday. We currently have 141 signatures. That's yeah. plenty. <laughs> I, I, think, I think this is a great initiative. And uh, many people miss out on Trial Island Lighthouse. It's been there since 1906. It was opened the same year we became a municipality here. You can, you can go all around the municipality. There is no notice about Lighthouse, and uh, I, I know members of council think I put sometimes too many, too many cans in, in the uh, in the municipality. But everyone reads them, everyone gets information from them. Um, we just approved two thousand dollars for uh, something at the end of Radcliffe Lane. Well, Radcliffe Lane looks right out Trial Island Lighthouse, and if we could combine something there with some information on Trial Island, so the public knows exactly what we're doing here as well in the history and the ships that went down up there and why it actually was put there. It would be a great story. Thanks. No, and I was just going to say that, I mean, this application actually then will ensure the preservation of the lighthouse for, you know, for, for forever. So so I, I think this is really good. I really want to thank Gwen for the work she's done on the Heritage Committee to bring this about. I, I don't think it was straightforward. and. Uh, so thank you for doing that, and also the support from the committee. For keeping an eye on this, I, I, that's what I really appreciate. Didn't let the ball drop. Thank you. And I think the committee greatly appreciates uh, Mayor Costin's uh, suggestion.
suggestion about pointing that to the council for funding. Okay, I have a quick question. Uh, to do with the other light bulbs, and that's the one over on um, Discovery. Um, there's a abandoned lighthouse there. Uh, it's almost it's adjoining the park. Has that ever been a subject of a discussion, or because uh, it seems to be falling more and more into a decrepitude? And, uh, it's unfortunate because, as I understand, that lighthouse was built after a huge tragedy. Very little discussion. Um, the unmanned ones, the ones that are uh, decommissioned, um, there's a much more complicated situation in that some group has to agree to buy the place and take on maintenance, and that gets into another kettle of fish. Or take on responsibility. No. Doesn't have to be required necessarily. Yeah, that's where it applies. Kettle of fish and lighthouses. <laughs> A mixed metaphor. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. So okay. So I don't. I just a motion to receive this. Move to receive. Second. Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Next item is food primary liquor licenses. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, could, I, could I make a suggestion? I, I am very mindful of the time on the other issues such as the DDPs that we really need to get to. Yep. This item and also the encounter item can be deferred if that's council. I would uh, accept a motion to defer discussion on this. Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, moved by Councillor Braithwaite, second by Councillor Jensen. Those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. Uh, we've got a lot of letters on a development variance permit for 2608 Lincoln. Um, I believe we receive those items listed at number 15 uh, for consideration later in the agenda. Okay. Second. 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 Uh, those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. Development variance permit 295 King George Terrace. I move a similar motion of those uh, items for a receipt at this point and consideration later. Second. 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 Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Next is letter from David Anderson. Same motion. Home. Second. Same motion with Second. regards to receiving it. Okay. In favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Those will all be discussed later. Uh, next is new business. That's great. You said you had something. Yeah, um, just as per your um, suggestion on May, September 12th, um, I'd like to, that, to make a motion that we name the um, Recognition of Renovation and Building Achievement Awards as the Alan Cassidy Recognition of Renovation and Building Achievement Awards mm -hmm. program. Second. Second. Any discussion on that? It was something that Alan. Uh, it's very dear to his heart, and in fact, I think it was his no, it was our joint suggestion that brought it uh, into place. I think it's very appropriate. Okay, there's no other comment. All those in favor? Country, Marsh Karras, thank you. Um, I'll let Penny know, she'll be very pleased. Um, table item 2608. Uh, uh, Sorry, Councilor Hubbard. Yeah. A resident uh, raised, a, raised an issue which I thought was a good issue about. Our, uh, our measurement of noise for generators. We have one measure of noise for generators for either day and night, and it's taken at the property line. His belief was that having generators around the community in, key in time of, of uh, earthquake or difficulty was a great safety feature. I discussed it with the fire chief who agreed. I sent you all a notice that showed that, that both Saanich and Victoria have uh, much have two levels, one for nighttime, one for daytime, much higher than our levels. And in, in case of at least one of them, they are not taken from the property line, but they are taken from the house that might be affected. And what I would like to move is we ask staff to bring back a report on this issue to uh, to consider changing our the number of decibels and perhaps instituting a daytime and nighttime situation, since I think the uh, having uh, generators located around the community is a great safety issue, and so does the fire chief. Okay, so second. Just for the report, sure, I'll second. Second, okay. Okay, uh, can I call a question? Does it fit? Country, motion carries. Next, any more new business? Well, That's the name. I, you know, I know we're short of time, but I we were going to talk about the deer issue. I, it was brought up at you, you can, and you know, it seems that the delay we 
had around dealing with the deal has actually um, brought us some more money from the province, is what I'm understanding, that they're um, subsidizing some of the culling of the uh, of the deer. But And I do understand the CRD is going to put a committee together or something. But I, I think we should wait. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Lapham, who was here tonight, yeah. he attended all the meetings and discussions with the province, the UBCM on deer. He's going to be bringing the report back, uh, and I will share it with you as soon as I get it. Okay. If you don't like it, or you want to go our okay. own way, you can do that. I, I think, again, the first step, and I think Mr. Lapham and the CRD are group, the first step is to create the Intermunicipal Committee. Yep. And uh, we did discuss Cranbrook. I'm not convinced that they probably put any money up in the findings of drafts, but uh, anyway, I think you're right. I think, I think what it indicated at UBCM, Councillor, is that province now takes it seriously. I think we, we've raised the bar enough. Uh, I've never chaired a panel where there were eight people on a panel and the deputy minister sitting in the audience. So None of whom had looked at the accident records? From, uh, none of whom had looked at the accident records. And I, I, I don't know if you know this, but I actually took the accident records thanks to Councillor Herbert who gave them to me. And the next day I had a meeting with the, uh, the, uh, the CEO of ICBC. Sorry, the president of ICBC, and I, uh, I, I presented it to her. So, okay. Um, any other new business? Seeing none. Uh, Two six zero eight Lincoln. I'm going to ask another question. Yep. Have a conflict um, because I'm in the notification area. Okay. Thanks very much. to uh, have a variance. This is the issue where there's a heat pump on my property. It's in a side yard. It's uh, got a noise reduction enclosure around it. The uh, structure is uh, within the uh, nine feet or the three meters of the property line. And I'm applying for a variance to uh, keep it in that same location. It's been there for about two years. Uh, are you aware of the letters we've received on this? No, not at all. Okay. Um, I think you should be. Okay. Uh, and I would recommend, given the hour, if you haven't read these, uh, that you should read them uh, and be prepared to respond to them. Uh, or else, if Council wants, we can continue. And maybe people here who want to speak to this particular issue. We've, we've, we've had someone complain. Okay. Um, number number of people, um, and especially with respect to uh, medical condition, uh, someone who is, is bothered by the noise from the heat pump. So I've never heard a word of it. Okay. Um, Mr. Thomason? Uh, yeah, I have some more information too. Uh, at, when it was uh, at the Committee of the Whole, uh, I recommended another sound check on it. That was done last week. I, I, uh, on business in Kelowna, uh, but uh, the result of that is that the decibel level at the property line is now fit, is 53 decibels, where a year ago it was measured it was 40 to 42. Okay, so we've got an increase in that. So, well. so it, that wouldn't meet the bylaw uh, sound level requirement. Okay, I think given the lateness tonight, um, that we should turn this over for the two weeks, it's the 24th. It gives you a chance to. Uh, both read your the letters that have come in, which are serious letters about this, and gives you a chance to talk to your neighbors. Because I think sure. uh, this is a, a obviously a big neighborhood issue around you. So um, if the council goes along with that, I'll get a motion to retable this. So moved. Okay. Second that by uh, it's moved by Councillor Jensen, second by Councillor Hope. Those in favor, country and motion carries. We'll, do, we'll put it on the agenda on the docket on the twenty fourth. Okay. Where do I get copies of the letters then? Uh, from uh, administration. Municipal yeah. clerk tomorrow morning, 8:30. Right here. Could I ask while uh, the letters are being picked up that Mr. Thompson can just put that little uh, piece of information in writing for us so we have it next week or next two weeks? You know, the business about the uh, yes. testing. Oh, certainly add that to it. Uh, yeah, I was away, so I just. 
about that myself sure. this morning. So. Okay. Is, is there, there any neighbors that live twenty six oh eight here? Okay. So you got you got two neighbors sitting right here. So that's a good start. Uh, obviously they've sat through the whole of the proceedings. Uh, and really enjoyed the whole dialogue around Oak Bay Lodge, but <laughs> they probably want to talk to you about about this more. So, okay, good. You don't have to read it now. It's being tabled. It's coming back uh, on the twenty fourth. Okay. Okay. Um, sure. I know what you're thinking. You're going to put in a request and say, "Could you put us a little earlier in the agenda?" <laughs> because Oak Bay Lodge is coming back, so we'll talk to the clerk about that. Okay. okay. Good. I can see you're almost falling asleep then. Okay. Uh, next item, 1070 Transit. Approved to lift the table. Excellent. To lift the table. Approved and seconded. Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carried. <coughs> Anyone here to speak to this? No. Sir, are you speaking to this? Um. Well, I own the house. Okay. Do and, you want to um, say anything about it? Um, we had several. My name is Al Bishop. Uh, we had several variances in. Yeah. And, um, notice went out to the neighbors, so we're wondering what the decision is. Uh, but we actually didn't get any any comment. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hilton, did we get any comments? No. I haven't seen any. No. Looks like you're good. Okay. Great. It's worth staying, right? <laughs> Always entertainment on a Monday night. But now it's a Tuesday. Okay, uh, call the question. Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. 295 King George Cherish. Second. 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 Seconded. Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. The owner is here on this. looking at was that uh, you had you had you, you put a proposal in front of your neighbors. I actually haven't heard back from any of your neighbors other than yourself. You've written all the letters. Um, but you did make a change, a small change to it. But it looks like an improvement. Is that right, Mr. Robbins? It is Mr. Robbins. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. The we'll I can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah, I sent an email to yeah. yeah. So we we need to really go with a uh, uh, fur deck rather than paper stones. Yeah. So That's you're actually good. making it nicer to look at from above? Correct. Which I think is the biggest yes. concern. And then I did, as you know, canvas all the neighbors and talk yep. to the nails. Yeah, well, it, we, we obviously sent out notification. Right. So you obviously did a good job. Okay, <laughs> no. And uh, I'm watching it every day from my house go up, so. Okay. Yeah. No, so. I wasn't notified. <laughs> you're so. outside of the radius, I guess. Yeah. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Thanks okay. for your input, by the way. Last You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I'll give you more input from across the board. <laughs> okay. uh, well, I'm there every morning from 7 to 8. <laughs> okay, I'll call the question. Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Next is 3205 Exeter. Move to lift the table. Second. Move and seconded by Councillor Copley. Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Is the applicant here? Okay. You've had a letter from, uh, did you see it? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, you didn't see the letter either? I haven't seen it. No. You said it's a late, late agenda. Okay. Um, it's really more for our staff, though, isn't it? It's just a correction. Do you want to have a quick read of it? I'm sorry, you should have, you should have risked the trees. Let's move on to the next item and then try and keep this going. Um, okay, that's the last one. Uh, Crescent Road 2130 Crescent. I move approval. Second. I move that the motion uh, be tabled in, uh, in order to give notice in accordance with the local government act. Second. In favor? Country. Motion carries. Next item stop signs on Eric. Do we have time to read it? 
Yes, I have. Can you respond, please? Yes. Um, uh, I think that. Uh, I need. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I believe that uh, there was. We, we did produce an Argos report in the first instance, and uh, the Argos indicated that we should uh, be uh, doing some uh, hand digging um, in order to ensure the survival of the trees, and, and uh, we, we did so, and uh, that uh, our supervision is continuing. Um, so I think that we still have the arborist on hand and supervising the, the site, uh, the, or the, the supervising the, the foundation. Uh, I believe the foundation is actually complete uh, and backfilled now. Uh, and the municipal arborist was out. Uh, uh, I understand that there was a two inch root that was discovered. It was a cedar root. It wasn't one like Erie Oaks. Uh, but they didn't actually come across any major roots that were impacted uh, by the uh, excavation for the two foot addition. Okay. We're more comfortable with that? Someone let Mr. Uh, Anderson know? I, I do not know. Yeah, good. Thanks. You, of course. Thanks. 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 Uh, call the question, those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. And for first, second, or third reading? Mm, first reading, perfect. Four readings. Second. For second reading, perfect. Uh, those eight. in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Then second reading, perfect. Four readings. Second. Set. Same type. Yeah. Two people. Anyone? Uh, any comments? Seeing none. The third reading for. Those in favor? Country motion carries. The third reading for five, four, eight. Second. Those in favor? Country motion carries. Finally, four, five, four, nine. The first reading for five, four, nine. Second. Those in favor? Country motion carries. The second reading for five, four, nine. Second. Anyone have any comments on this? Those in favor? Country motion carries. The third reading for five, four, second. 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 And we're not going to go on camera, so we can get out of here. So the motion to adjourn. Before you do uh, call the question, I just want to thank staff for sticking with us for 11 to 11:30. I know it's a long day, especially after everyone's already worked all day. I did. I did call first. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't call. I didn't call in on adjournment. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thanks very much. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome.